This next one's pretty fucking good. I watched a little bit of it, but <laughs> this is the first person of color that I've seen that's also really on the incel kick. Like I figured, I figured there's as much, but like this guy put this video out there. Good evening, friends. I hope you're all having a good day. What a wonderful day to be alive. So you see the title of the video already starts off. You don't think he's black pill because he says it's a good day to be alive, which it, it goes contrary to most of the black pill shit. <laughs> it's called why working with women fucking sucks. And before I get go into it, let me say this. Not all women. OK, whenever some guy says all women are beautiful, you never hear a woman say not all women. Whenever a guy says all women are smart, you never hear a woman says a woman say not all women. OK, so if I make a fucking general statement, please understand it's not all fucking women. But you have to have disclaimers like this because a lot of people are fucking slow. So just in case there's a woman watching this who doesn't fucking understand. There you go. Leave the video now. We're going to take everything fucking personal. But anyway, so guys, I started a new job today. I'm actually going to quit this fucking job. But um, the job I really want, I can't start till Blood Tuesday, so I'm a fucking Starbucks work. from Nick Cincinnati. <laughs> it was one of the two men that were arguing in the background. Oh god, this blonde chick with pigtails that looks like you know that girl from the Chipmunks. <laughs> she reminded me of something that looked like a nine-year-old. Oh god. She this demanded job. a day off. <laughs> she How asked dare me that to mention. escort her to her car after this one fat dude came in. <laughs> she said something about, like, a family obligation, like it's her dying mother's last birthday. Well, if she's not going to be here next year, why even bother, dumb bitch? Like, that's, like, the energy I'm getting from him. <laughs> like, like, extremely aggressive. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> it just keeps going. <laughs> And today, which is already over, and Monday, and then I'm fucking quitting. Now, the reason I'm going to do that is for a couple reasons. So this lady that offered me this job, she called me 8 o'clock at night on a fucking Wednesday. I've never had no shit like that happen ever for a fucking job. But she called me, and I answered the phone. She's like, can I schedule an interview for 9.30 in the morning? I'm like, sure, okay, I'll do it. She actually doesn't end up calling me till 9.35, so she can't keep her fucking word. She's not punctual, right? We talk. <laughs> can you come in today at three o'clock for an interview? Me? I can have you working tomorrow. She told me this shit. I can have you working tomorrow. Now, like you guys said, I recently, I was in a rut for a while. I couldn't get a fucking job. I felt useless all this shit. I'm like, okay, great, right? I show up, suit and tie, earlier than what the fuck she expected. Everything she needed, right? She interviews me, all this stuff. You sound like a great fit. This will work. She scans my fucking license, my social, all that shit, right? I'm like, great. She 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 might not be as fucking dumb as she looks, because this girl looks fucking stupid. She has that um <laughs> that vocal fry, um, mean girls, but she's fat and not attractive enough to be a mean girl. So that's going on, okay? But Jesus fucking Christ, this guy is so vicious. <laughs> like I, I unironically didn't even know that like my point was like tangentially right. <laughs> like he's literally pissed off at the HR worker for asking if he can cover a shift. <laughs> oh, this gets so much better. I'm hopeful. Uh, oh god. But guess what? There was a guy who actually showed up for the same job, right? But he showed up later than me. He didn't even show up in a suit or tie or anything. He showed up in regular fucking clothes. So I show up in these good fucking clothes, taking her seriously. She's like, "I'll give you a call." in about two hours because she has to talk to her manager and shit. I'm like, okay, that makes sense, right? So that happens. She calls me back at about six o'clock that same day saying, um, I talked to my manager. Uh, we have enough people. What do you think about getting you started on Monday or Tuesday? I'm like, fuck, right? So like I said, today I start that job, which is a whole week goes by. I was supposed to start last Friday. I started this Friday, which is today. So I go there and I end up seeing the guy I saw at the interview, right? I asked him, so when did you start? I started uh, last Friday. I'm like, what the fuck? I was so pissed because guys, not only that, yesterday, which is Thursday, she's like, hey, I get you started tomorrow, but you gotta do this, that, and the third, and can you uh, send me a picture of your, your license and your birth certificate? I lost it by mistake, I'm so sorry. I was just, I was so pissed off because it's, it's always like this. Like, I, like, I try not to judge women. I try not to hate them, but they just always just become so fucking insufferable every fucking time. And they don't try to fix themselves. Let me give you another example. I used to work at this restaurant, okay? Um, I'll be actually be honest, the, the only, the, there was a girl in there who would never give me a problem. She would do everything I would say. I was like, I was in charge of dealing with the people. She was in charge of making the food. I would tell her what to make. She wouldn't give me any lip. We'd leave on time, shit was great, right? She was a lesbian too, um, right? But then she, her thing was she was fucking late all the time. 
So that's when I got rid of her. So then this fat black bitch who was fucking was convicted of attempted murder. She was found guilty, Jesus right? Christ. She went to prison and didn't learn fucking shit. And you <laughs> so basically, I, I want to know what job this is if he showed up at like with a fucking suit on and somebody showed up with like plain clothes. Like I'm waiting for like the plot twist that it was like a fucking subway or something. Like, he shows up to be a sandwich artist in a fucking three piece suit. <laughs> Oh god, I, I I fucking I love this the spite and vitriol and just like the fucking the hatred for just not just this particular woman. He hates all women. Like he right. is, some woman did him wrong at some point in his past and he has not gotten over it. Right? Like like when when people say like misogyny and it's like no, this right here is like legitimate misogyny. This yeah. isn't like I criticized a woman on Twitter. Like this is like a legit dude that like has like actual wrath towards the entire female gender. <laughs> very true, very true, very true. Oh yeah. This man I I, I fucking I, I love it. Just the anger, the hatred towards everybody. This is the guy that would like <laughs> I don't even know how to explain it. Like this is the guy you think would burn the place down just because somebody did him wrong, like you said, you know, look, can you cover for me tomorrow? <laughs> and he comes to work with a five gallon tank of gasoline and some matches. <laughs> I fucking hate this place. I'm done. I'm done. You might have heard me talk about her before, but I'm about to give you a more in depth um, view of her. So there was this girl that also worked there. We're, we're going to call her Penelope. So the nice girl is called Penelope, and the prison bitch that got convicted of murder, we're gonna call her uh, Silly. Let's call, her, let's call her Silly. So I meet, I meet Silly, she seems nice at first, but then there's a couple things I noticed when I first meet her. Number one, she's fat. Number two, she's a black <laughs> woman wearing blue uh, contacts. That's a sign of mental illness. So I'm like, okay, right? But I'm giving her a bit of that. I'm still nice to her. I think she's a lunatic, but I'm still treating her with the utmost respect. Right? She starts asking me questions. She starts asking me about the girl Penelope. So the girl Penelope that also works there, she has shitty social skills. And this girl's going to school for to be a doctor, right? And when I mean she has shitty social skills, it's very apparent. Like I would come in, you know how when you come into work, you just say hi to speak to your the people, say, hey, I'm here. I'm here to help all this shit. She would never say hi back when I said hi to her. I mean, every time she's going to fucking med school. I'm not trying to fuck this girl. I never asked her for her number. I never asked her no personal shit. It was always about business. But she just would be fucking weird about everything. But she could, she would make the food, but it was just, she was so fucking weird. And even the customers were sad, right? So silly would ask me about Penelope. And one day I was like, um, yeah, Penelope, she, she's nice, but she's really weird. And I think she hates me. Right. But little did I know this fat bitch silly was running her fat ass mouth back to Penelope fucking causing all this shit that I didn't know. Right. And another <laughs> thing you got to realize about silly is that this lady is in her thirties right she went to prison and didn't learn anything she would be on the phone all the time talking about how she wants to suck dick and how she's cheating on her man all this other shit. and she's obese she's a obese woman who got convicted of murder attempted murder right and she didn't learn shit from it you know you know how when you hear about those stories about guys who go to prison they come out and they're in shape and they change their life it's the opposite women never come out of prison better people it's just it's not how it works i i mean <laughs> like yeah she might be fat but she hasn't tried to kill someone a second time. So, like, maybe she did learn that murder is bad. Like, don't get me wrong. My One of my biggest pet peeves is infidelity, but, like, let's not act like it's equivalent to murder. Right? <laughs> He's putting fat on the same level as the infidelity and murder at this point. <laughs> yeah, like, like, it's such a fucking crime. Oh shit! And I'm sure give this dude another ten years of him ranting about women and not being able to have like any genuine human contact, and he'll balloon up to 450 pounds himself. <laughs> oh my god! No, I just I love the I love the whole fact that at this point, technically, if you really want to say it, fat is worse than murder in his eyes. <laughs> yeah, like, and I just wonder, it's like every, he's like, oh, this fat bitch, this fat bitch. Like, okay, so what, like, is fat in your mind? Yeah. Is it like anyone over like 110 pounds? Yeah. Or is it just, or are you just like that much of a woman hater that you like think that like 
calling any woman fat is like the worst thing you could call them and it's like <laughs> just trying to dig at them <laughs> and mind you we told we strayed completely this is the example too we're, we're we're like two minutes into the example story so she's telling bullshit to penelope about me um she's bad with customers like she'll close <laughs> like we we close at eight o'clock she will close the store at 7 45 knowing that we're a small business we're not fucking chipotle we're not mcdonald's we're not burger king and she's fucking everything up right i remember one day some girl that she's really cool with came in right and i had a line of people and i'm faster than her and i'm better with people so i tell her hey can you i'm i what i mean i'm right next to silly i tell her hey hey can you ring this girl up for me can you ring up can you ring up for me because they're talking like they're talking like it's just those two in the room and i have a line of people i'm like look since you like talking to her you ring her up i'll take the rest of these customers and i'm not yelling because i'm really right i what i mean like let's say i'm right here she's right there i'm right here look, spit, talking to her ear so she has to hear me right so when all those people go i was like so did you ring up the girl because she kind of looked like she she kind of walked away fast. She's like, oh shit, I forgot. I was like, silly, I fucking asked you to ring it up. And guess what? So I tell the manager this, right? Because this girl also, she stole money from the store. I told the fucking owner what happened. He, 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 he fucking says, okay. He looks at the camera, he says, I can't fire her because it looks like you you were in a, you were in on it with her. I'm like, no. See, oh, another thing I forgot, I forgot to mention. Silly also has the phone number of the same girl that walked out with free food. So I said, just call her. When I told her, when I told the bitch to fucking call her, she looked at me like I was dumb. I was like, you work here. You have a criminal record. You don't have a lot of fucking options. Why the fuck can't you do it? I said this in my mind because she, like I said, she's crazy. She might fucking kill me. Fat people are crazy and fat women are the craziest <laughs> ones. So she looks at me like I'm fucking crazy. <laughs> I just imagine the video. And it's just him sticking his hand in the till, putting money in a burlap sack. Be like, you don't understand. She was stealing the money. I was just going to put it in this bag and bury it outside like a squirrel until I knew the coast was clear. Yeah, I'm keeping it I wasn't from stealing her. it. From yeah, her. like I, I'm liberating it for the time being for the good of the company. You don't understand. I promise I wasn't stealing it. She was the bad one. Did you know she tried to kill someone? Did you see she's fat? <laughs> she's fat and she tried to kill someone. Why would you? Why would you suspect me of doing anything wrong? Yeah. Good lord. <laughs> Can't she's, <trust> large. Anybody. <laughs> she's large and she wants to be in charge. <laughs> she works in the kitchen. She has access to knives. Do you not understand? <laughs> right? If she's in there, she'll eat away our profit. <laughs> the owner takes her side. Then one day, I'm just serving people. I'm doing all this stuff. Like, I'm waiting. I'm serving. I'm bringing people their food i'm taking orders i'm cleaning the store i'm actually this stuff i'm like hey give me that she's like fuck you nigga like out of nowhere i don't because I, I i guys i want to make something clear i don't curse at this girl i don't tell her what to do i ask her to do something i never yell at her i say please i say thank you everything i'm telling you is how i felt about her in my head i never expressed this shit to this bitch so she starts cursing at me telling me i'm a i'm a fuck nigga i'm i'm like why like why i care so much about this job it's like it's it's, it's so weird like she just starts going off i tell the owner guess what he still fucking keeps her so she's allowed to steal money sabotage the business and be a complete degenerate human being and she does not get fired bro i got another you don't fucking understand. story so... you don't understand this is my life's work i've always wanted to be a sandwich artist and this is the only place i can do it ever since quiznos closed you don't understand like i am passionate about subs have you seen jersey Mike's standards. <laughs> right? We can beat them. We can beat Jersey Mike. All right, but we can't do this if we let this fat bitch eat all of our chicken teriyaki. I saw her in the back. She was stealing double chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> right? Right? She was she got herself lunch, but she wrung it out as a large sub. <laughs> but she made it a meal without adding it into the register. Yeah. <laughs> she stole from us a large beverage and two macadamia nut cookies. <laughs> We're never going to beat Jersey Mike's at this rate. This is why Quizno shut down. <laughs> oh, and did you know she's fat? <laughs> right? Like, she's so fat that she stole. <laughs> uh, it's not her criminal history that's her weight <laughs> that's that's what caused the problems here the weight <laughs> when i was working at chipotle have you ever met a woman you no no did you hear that 
wind it because I just want to make sure it's what I heard. I got another fucking story. So, when I was working at Chipotle, have you. <laughs> Dude, I didn't even watch this video. And I was like, well, how am I so fucking close with this shit? I watched how just like so a close? first couple minutes of this video and I was like, oh no, this is going on the show. I gotta watch this. I gotta am I like... react to this. So. <laughs> am I like an autist seer? <laughs> like, I can just see the autism in someone and be like, like it's like that fucking movie. No, no. This is sandwich shop drama, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I like can that, sense it. I can see it in his aura. <laughs> I'm like Bruce Willis in Unbreakable. Like I just can like look at them, and I when I touch the when I touch the lockout, I can just see their like their lockout sense. <laughs> If you ever met a woman, you could just tell she's a piece of shit. You can't prove it, but you feel it, right? So it was my first day. For whatever reason, something told me this bitch was a. So we are. Are we now on an example from an example? If I'm tracking this right, we are two examples deep, and we've left the plot <laughs> completely. A whore or a piece of garbage. She goes on break, and she's gone for like two and a half hours. When she comes back, she says, "My mom picked me up and forgot I was on break." Just a, another flat out lie. So once that happened, I just didn't speak to her. I didn't even speak to her really on my first day. But when that happened, I said, I can't associate with you because you're a fucking lying scum. And for whatever reason, all because I didn't talk to her, this bitch fucking hated me. She would get all the other Mexicans in there because she's Mexican to like hate me and stuff. One of them ended up liking me. The other girl really didn't give a fuck. But there was like this one fat race guy war, who really wanted to war. fight me. He was like, get my... <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't get that. Hold on. Brother, the... Go back, go back. And for whatever reason, all because I didn't talk to her, this bitch fucking hated me. She would get all the other Mexicans in there, because she's Mexican, to like hate me and stuff. One of them ended up liking me, the other girl really didn't give a fuck. But there was like this one fat guy who really wanted to try to fight me. He was so It's all the weight. It's all the weight. It's the fat people of the fucking world that are ruining this man's life. Right? And I like how he makes it sound like a race war, too. Like, it was all the Mexicans. They tried to twist them against me. <laughs> it's because I'm a person of color. Never mind that they are a person of color, too, but it's because I'm a person of a particular color. <laughs> a different my shade. Bro <laughs> Brother, to fuck you up, I was like, meet me outside. He would never meet that? me outside because I train every day. <laughs> you know, you guys probably know this. Like I say all the time, when the collapse happens, when the fall of the dollar happens, I hope somebody fucking kills me because this life is just so fucking stupid. We let the worst fucking people live. We let the worst fucking people be in charge. I'm not happy to fucking be on this planet because the people that live in this country are okay with this bullshit. And I hate a majority of people. I was watching this fucking interview with James O'Keefe, Tim Pool and uh, Luke Krakowski, James O'Keefe said what I've been saying all the time. Human beings are naturally evil and most humans are fucking evil, right? So I told his ass how to kick his ass. He never did shit. And the reason I'm fine with guys who talk shit because with guys, you can take it to the absolute limit, right? If a man talks shit, he could possibly die. There's a chance somebody will kill him if you talk enough shit to another man. When it comes to women, you can't- What is this logic? Oh my God, I'm blown away. Like, holy shit. Like, his entire thing is, like, the whole, like, yo, you fat, and they just pull out, like, some gun and shoot them right there on the spot. <laughs> no, you don't understand. This man been calling me fat since fucking middle school. I, I hate him. I hated him for a long time. <laughs> like, it's some, like, awkward gang street violence thing. Like, what the fuck? Oh, man can't do it we just kind of let him talk shit you never hear about a guy just shooting a woman in the fucking head for running her mouth you never hear about it if we did more of that shit we wouldn't have these fucking problems sir may i have you may i have you look at like maybe a, a small channel called a uh, small type of channel called jim can't swim there's there's instances of this out there sir uh i actually watched one recently because again my wife's into all this shit uh where there was a guy who literally just because him and his wife were in a fight Went upstairs, got a gun, came back downstairs, and discharged the weapon into her. So, like, yeah. I mean, this shit happens. <laughs> You're acting like it's a fucking uh, anomaly. <laughs> but, we, but, but we fucking don't. But anyway. So, like I said, I've, I've just had a history of just working with women. 
and they and they just and they pissed me off. Oh, let me tell you what happened at the fucking construction uh, the construction job today. So, oh, construction, construction. Okay, we got the lore. It's construction on this job. So he's upgraded from sandwich artist to construction artist. <laughs> so he's just going from different types of building, from sandwich to building. <laughs> Sandwich to houses. <laughs> Jesus. Can you imagine him showing up on a construction site in a suit? <laughs> yeah, like, it's kind of like, okay, look, I, I get it. Like, you know, you want to be presentable and shit for your interview, but there's, like, certain types of jobs out there that are skill-based, okay? Like, like, I have an automotive background. I've worked in automotive jobs, and... I don't think I ever really dressed up in a suit or anything. I think I wore, like, nice polo, collared shirt kind of thing, and that's about the extent of it. Like, show up and look nice-ish, ish. But, yeah, it's uh, it's not a requirement. Like, if you show up in a three-piece suit for, again, Chipotle, in this case, <laughs> it kind of, it's kind of over, it's overdoing it, man. It You're really reaching. is. You're reaching way too far. <laughs> When I was there, there was a couple things I noticed. A whole bunch of black guys. Whenever I'm at a job with a whole bunch of black guys, always a whole bunch of bullshit. And I'm black telling you this. When I mean there was almost a fight over some dumb shit, guys kept getting distracted by the girls at the place, at the job site. The girls don't do shit. They really don't. They just fucking stay. All the supervisors do, I was saw this, they kept talking to the girls about bullshit, asking them, they're just trying to fuck them, which is dumb. This is why I hate working with women, because if you, because guys will always do the most pathetic shit when a girl is present. They'll switch up on their friends, they'll start losing focus, they know the girl doesn't want to fuck them, they know the girl doesn't fucking like them, but what do they do? They still fucking simp. And like I said, I used to be a simp, I mean, I still kind of am, but it's like, I'm actively trying to fight that shit. It's the guys who always switch up on their friends for just the hope of pussy that piss me off the most because they don't have any So this man truly hates everybody Like it, this is not just a fuck women This is uh this is I truly fucking hate everybody of every race He's evolved <laughs> Like he doesn't have he doesn't have a, a directional hatred He's not a misogynist He's a fucking ogenist. <laughs> Any loyalty, right? Just like how I say women will fuck their kids over for a man, men will fuck their kids over for a woman that doesn't even fucking want them. And it pisses me the fuck off. So yeah, like I said, the girls are fucking distracting the guys. One guy told me he had a nail go through his fucking hand. Like, oh, I'm like, what the fuck? Like, what do you mean you had a nail go through your hand? He's just saying this shit and it's like, bro. A nail going through your hand is a big fucking deal. And, I, and honestly, I would see the way these guys will keep breaking their neck to look at these fucking girls. I'm like, it's over. It's fucking, let me, I hear some relationship bullshit. I don't want you guys to hear that. Well, I only want you to hear me. <laughs> so, so, yeah, he's fucking, these guys are just doing this dumb, whole bunch of emotional guys, single mother raised guys, and there's women around. Bad combination. Bad fucking combination. When I was working at, as a correction officer, that's when this shit was at the highest point. Because, guys... So I was like a... This man has no direction in life. Correction officer, Chipotle worker, and construction worker tells me you have no direction. You have no idea what you want to do. You haven't pursued a, a career in which you can actually, like, make a living. What I see is, like, the guy that literally goes into, like, the classified ads or whatever... Or like on online jobs in your area and just checks everything and just sends out resumes. Yeah, yeah, just, just goes to what, Yeah, yeah, goes to whatever he gets. Yep. Like he's not trying to build a career; he's just trying to get like a paycheck. Yeah, yeah, I could totally see that. Oh my god, this is this guy's something else. When I was doing corrections, I did like almost everything. I drove to all the prisons in the area. I did dietary. I did real. I would go in. The you know what's another leading thing here that I've noticed? At every job, he does everything. I bet he does actually nothing, and he just perceives that he does everything. <laughs> you know, I bet very well could be it. Like he could be the person he hates, and he's just blind to it. But like, holy shit! You know, there's one. There's that small saying like. If the problem keeps happening, you might be the problem. In the dorm, yeah, where be like 50 guys in there. Only thing I have on me is radio and some mace. If these motherfuckers want to kill me, they could, right? I did every fucking department. And everybody wants to kill them, apparently. <laughs> this is another trend I'm noticing. <laughs> if everybody wants to kill you all of the time, 
you may be the problem. Because I was, I was good at it. It's not hard working at a prison. The only thing that sucks about working at a prison is the prisoners who will fucking simp for the female correction officers, right? Because I would have situations where the guys, they would come in to like help me because I had all the snacks. I was, I was supplying all that stuff, right? They would help me. You, you, they were called your working men. I'd get my guys, we work and stuff, and we'd be cool. We'd be working hard, stacking pallets, wrapping pallets, filling out orders, carrying stuff up, but whatever, doing everything good, right? But as soon as a woman comes into the fucking warehouse, what do these guys do? They want to simp. They want to work for her. They want to fucking betray me for this bitch. And then she ends, and then this, this is the craziest part. After the work was done and me and my coworkers got back, all the fucking women CEOs would do is just talk shit about the, det uh, the, about the detainees. I'm just like, it's like clockwork, guys. It's like fucking clockwork. They just ruin fucking everything. And when I was fucking working at the fucking prison, there was this, I had a female supervisor that liked me, right? This bitch was in her 50s, trying to be my girlfriend, asking me all these questions. But this bitch smoked cigarettes, had a shitty diet, was out of shape. Up, 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 the diet, the diet, out of shape. I bet you she was fat. How much yeah, you want right? <laughs> fat and smoked, how dare she have oh choices. Oh my God. <laughs> the worst, the most evil of people. Oh. It was, it was just like, it just, it didn't make any sense. And she would try to like, ask me personal questions. It's like, we got work to do, you dumb bitch. And, and guess what? She never did the work. Cause she's not picked. She would either have me or a detainee do it. And it's just like, what the fuck? It, it's, it's, I've always noticed this is they just ruin everything. When it comes to work, they really fucking ruin everything. I'm fine with working with like autistic lesbians because they can focus on the task. They're not attracted to men. And, and you know what I mean? But it's like, it's always the same shit. Like, I just see how guys get distracted. Or the girl will just do some asinine shit, crazy shit that a guy would get fired for. We've all seen it. We've all seen shit where a girl would do something that makes no sense, that's a hindrance to the fucking business, and she doesn't get fired. I remember I was trying to work at this one place for months. I was applying for like eight, eight nine months, swear to God. And, um... They kept telling me no. They kept telling me no. Come to find out the owner, the manager, the general manager is a fucking woman. Right? And when when she when I finally got my chance, oh, we'll schedule you to start in four weeks. It's like, bitch, I don't have a job. This was back when I just got laid off. And because they finally called me back, I'm like, four weeks? What the fuck? And guess what? The hours they were gonna give me were the hours I was looking for back when I had my uh my good knife job. I, I was trying to get a second job. It was just like, it's like, bro, it's like why because guys i don't want to be right about how bad women are i really don't want to be right if you saw the thing about the baseball player about the girl who fucking lied on him he was like the highest paid guy the highest paid guy in the fucking major league baseball and he got screwed over by a girl bro it's like why why do we let them destroy businesses men all these great people and i see all the time guys this is why it's easy for me to like, cause now what I do is when I go out in public, I literally act like I don't see women. I don't fucking like, I, I've had situations where a woman was screaming for help. I was in the city. It sounded like she was like a, a far away. I didn't even fucking look back. I didn't give a fuck. I didn't fucking ask because every time, every time I've tried to help women or they, or they're fucking around me, they ruin everything. Every fucking time, every fucking time. It's like clockwork, bro. Now, I mean, if they're, they're like, they can be good in relationships, like girlfriend, boyfriend, husband, wife, marriage and shit. But like when it comes to working, doing a job, something that's objective and you get paid for results, they're fucking terrible. They're always fucking terrible. And you can't get a straight answer out of men because they want to fuck the women. So they'll let the women be pieces of garbage. Let the women get away with fucking murder because these guys don't have any fucking standards and they don't have a fucking spine because everything's about fucking bitch that don't even like you. This is what pisses me off the most, guys. It's because like whenever like <sighs> this is what whatever is coming next is the thing that pisses him off most this has to be beyond fatness and crime and smoking can i just say that how i find it funny the only acceptable person in his mind are autistic lesbians <laughs> <laughs> like that is the only people out of all eight billion people on the planet that are acceptable to this man are autistic lesbians <laughs> Like what's the a fuck? very particular type? <laughs> yeah, right. Like holy fucking shit! Like he has a type. <laughs> I mean, guys, tell let me. Let me tell you something. I used to, cause I used to work with a girl. She got caught fucking an inmate, but before she got caught. She used to talk shit about, because there used to be a maintenance guy that would come down to our department, and he would always try to flirt with her. 
I didn't give a fuck because I told myself I'm not gonna fuck none of you whores. You all are fucking corrupted. Because number one, black because the place I worked at it had mostly black correctional officers. Black women are known for fucking criminals more than any other group of women. And we have the highest SC I, I, ju I just know all the stats on my people, so I know to stay the fuck away from them. Well, at least most of them, because there are good black people, but like I say, they don't want to stand up against the bad ones because they want to fucking integrate with the pieces of shit that we have in this race. So... <laughs> This is so like, yeah, internalized um, racism. Yeah, this is new. Holy shit, I didn't realize this. Holy fuck. Like when people talk about like you know women with like internalized misogyny or like <laughs> people that are black with like internalized like white pride or whatever, however they word it. Like yeah. this is the guy they're talking about. <laughs> Like, he's, he's the guy that's like, I'm black and I have a black friend, but I hate my race. Yeah. Like, yeah. like it's, oh my, ugh, I can't. <laughs> and this is a real person, not like a parody character no, or something. No, no, like, no, this is real. Apparently he does multiple videos and stuff like this. Like, I just came across him and I was like, as sold. She would just talk shit about the him, the other guys, and I'm just like, you probably talk shit about me once I leave, and it's just like, I don't fucking get it, guys. And and it, I, 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 I don't fucking know. It's this is why I'm gonna I'm gonna work at the car shop because number one, the only, it's only one new job, new job, bro. Fuck construction, fuck fuck Chipotle, fuck. Oh god, what was the other one? <laughs> oh, corrections officer. Fuck all of that. Now I'm going into automotive. Men, men, sir, let me tell you, you better be able to handle getting shit passed your way. Because I have not worked in a single automotive job where you will not get shit on. Perpetually. Yeah, this is the part that I'm interested in since you have, like, actual personal experience with this now. Yes, yeah, like, I've worked in parts stores, I've worked in garages. No matter what, you will get shit on. You will have to learn to take it and be okay with it and dish it out if you want. <laughs> like, I've literally, like, every fucking job I've ever worked in. Oh, my God. Like, every single one. <laughs> yeah, and if you don't want it, just keep your head down, do your work, and go home. And eventually people get bored and they won't give you shit. Yeah. But you got to still take it for a bit. I mean, they're going to give it to yeah. you no matter what. <laughs> it's like a hazing ritual. Like, you got to yeah. just fucking handle it. Yep. One woman in there, it's an old white lady, and she just deals with the public. I'm, I'm going to be working with guys, fixing cars, and that's exactly what I like. Because I've had problems with guys before at a job. But like I said, we can either we can always fight, talk. Something's going to fucking happen. We're going to settle this problem. If, if, and the thing about two guys, if two guys don't like each other, they'll both shut the fuck up to get the work done, right? That's what they'll do. A woman, she'll never I'm shut the fuck up. She doesn't. have a seizure from that fucking sh <laughs> like crying. <laughs> Yeah, but seriously, like, okay, like, give you the best example, the funniest example, anyway, of, like, me working in a garage, right? I I've used this example a lot, and, like, this is a fucking foot-and-mouth situation, and it was funny, and it's on me, and I don't mind telling it, and it's one of those situations where, okay, it was the morning, beginning of the day in a garage and all that shit, and one of the guys came in, and he's, you know, doing the rounds, hey, how you doing, this kind of thing. And he comes over to me and he's like, hey, how you doing? I'm like, oh, about as good as a one-legged man in an ass-kicking contest. And he goes, I don't know. I think I'd do pretty good. And lifts up his pant leg and that motherfucker had one fucking leg. The other was a prosthetic. And I never knew. God damn. <laughs> yeah. That was like one of those situations. Like... <laughs> and I just sat there and all I could say was, I'm sorry. You rolled a D20 in life and got a one. <laughs> Not even. Like, I just needed, like, a D3 to pass and still got the one. <laughs> like, critical failure. <laughs> oh, man. I just, I, I was flabbergasted. I'm like, I am so sorry. And, like, I felt bad for, like, the rest of the day. And, like, genuinely, it was just a matter of, like, shit talking. And, like, he got me good. That's what it is. He just got me good. <laughs> and it was just one of those, like, uh, okay. <laughs> like, I have no idea what the fuck do I say next. Like, don't get me wrong. There's, like, great times, like, when people are there for each other in garages and shit. Like, I've seen a major accident happen. Like, because uh, I worked at a shop that worked on both 
uh, tractor trailers and cars. Okay. So I was learning the, the heavier side, the tractor trailer side, because I was going to do a road service truck eventually. And, uh, like you, you, I got to see all the pictures and everything and like, holy crap. So one day I am, uh, there's a small door that divides like our truck shop from the rest of the service base for cars and stuff. And there's four service bays. And then there's one service bay for trucks. And, uh, this guy that was notorious for airing up fucking truck tires outside of a cage. Like you have to, you should be using a cage for this stuff. Cause like a car tire, most car tires are like 35 PSI, 40 maximum. A truck tire is 120. Christ. Nope. <laughs> and uh we did like we did retreads and stuff so like if you're going down the highway and you see the the rubber on the side of the road that's that's a retread that came off of a tire and it's literally the center of the tire they cut out and they will replace it's a common practice they revulcanize them and everything and it works great well i uh i just was talking with the guy and i came through the door and as i shut the door I just heard the loudest fucking like grenade level bang I've ever heard in my life. And I just watched dust kick up from underneath the door. And I'm like, I don't want to open this door. I don't. But uh, thankfully, like when I was in there, I didn't pay attention when I left. He actually was airing up the tire in the cage because it was a split rim. And split rims are like extra danger dangerous because they're known for the, the lip of the wheel will actually detach from the wheel. Like, it's meant to do that for taking the tire on and off easier. But they will unseat and pop off. And he didn't have that. He actually had what's called a zipper. So, like, if you take a jacket and you run a zipper up really quick, it sounds like that when this tire is about to go. And you have literally, like, a second or two. Like, enough to, like, turn your head away really quick or something. You're not going to get out of the danger zone. But maybe you could do something to help yourself. And Minimize the damage, at least. Yeah. And, uh... It zippered this tire and fucking went off. And he actually was deaf for a couple days just from the sheer force of it and everything else. So like this dude wants to work in a shop. You need to really understand the dangers. Damn. That's like, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Like there's, there's some crazy stuff. Like, you know, <laughs> it's, it's just not as simple as he thinks, but that's why like you give each other shit and like you dick around. Cause like you're all in the same level of like, you're working on stuff. Like I've got burned all the fucking time. I shit, all sorts of shit. That's why my body is so shot was from working those types of jobs. It reminds me of like what my friend said, like my military buddy said, right? Like he said when he was in the army, like they would give each other shit. But like, you know, when one would get shot, like, yeah one friend got shot like like he said like i remember like i stood there and i like i don't even he's like i don't even remember i just laid down on the trigger while someone dragged him and like we had everybody just run up and we made like this wall of our own bodies to make sure that he wasn't gonna get hit again yeah and we just laid fire like a firing squad until he was done yep yeah and it's like it's like it, it reminds me of that like you know you mess with each other but when like you know the chips are down it's almost like a brotherhood yeah like... yeah exactly it's one of those things that just like yeah it, it's uh it's camaraderie of sorts like i i had i've had military friends that served overseas like all during iraq and afghanistan and stuff like that and like we got along because like i worked in environments that were just very much like that too you know like i Christ, I've had all sorts of jobs that, like, you wouldn't believe the stuff that I've been through, what I've seen, and all sorts of shit. <laughs> if I ever reach, like, maybe a thousand subs or something, I'll do, like, a small Q&A and shit if anybody ever wanted to know any of that crap. But, yeah. So, like, I just, I don't see, long story short, I don't see this guy fitting in in that type of group. It's not a race oh, thing. It's not anything. It's just that I just don't see him working out. He doesn't have the personality for it. Like, I can see him being very standoffish with everyone and just being, yeah. like, like the garage, like, joke. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, like, I, I I, can't tell you the amount of times I've been told, fuck you, get the fuck out of here, what the fuck are you doing? Like, people scream at me and everything else. Like, yeah, this, that's the shit you're going to deal with, brother. Like, it's not going to be fun. <laughs>
doesn't like you. She'll always do some bullshit because women don't get beat up or shot or anything like that. They don't get, women don't fear dying when they have a problem with somebody. They don't fear that. They don't, they don't even think of death as a thought. They don't think somebody's gonna shoot them in the head. They don't think they're gonna get jumped. They don't think of none of that shit. They just think they can be who they are and they'll walk and they'll be protected. And to a degree they are. Actually, they are right. Because I'm I've, a man guys, and I don't I have, think that. No. <laughs> well, like, oh, shit. like, I've never once like had an argument with somebody outside of one person who said like, bragged about having a history of like literal street violence that i was ever that i would ever worry about would be violent yeah like literally like it's it's absolutely insane that that's like your like legitimate take yeah like yeah. His, his thoughts of women and the workplace and everything else yeah oh yeah, yeah like, like it you've... makes me wish i could work in a job like like i could have served in the military and shit like that like that i didn't have some of the like the problems i did where i literally couldn't because i would have loved to like have like that sort of like camaraderie yeah stuff but it's like this guy just doesn't seem like he could actually handle that like he doesn't no. seem to want camaraderie no and there's people like that fucking all the time i'm sure but like this guy i just don't see him sticking it out he's just gonna sit there and like this will be his next rant which will be you won't believe how they treated me there. These guys were stuck up and everything else. Like, I, or like they're making crude jokes. They think it's funny to make fun of me. Like, I, I, I could see a million different ways he's going to complain about the next job. We've all seen videos of where a woman is hitting a guy and everybody just laughs and, and doesn't do shit. But as soon as he hits her back, all the guys turn to fucking simp pussy mode to protect some girl they don't know. She could have started the fight. She could have did everything wrong. And I've seen this. Like, I've heard so many prison stories about guys getting fucked over by women. What's crazy to me is that none of these prison inmates realize you're all in here because you all got fucked over by a woman. They don't. Nobody puts. Guys will overlook how women destroy their lives just so they can get so they can fuck them. I'm telling you, they will do this. And it's. This is such a fucked outlook. Oh my god. I'm I'm definitely sure that the guy selling drugs or like the dude that committed armed robbery was totally screwed by a woman and not their own life choices. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I totally believe that. Yeah, yeah, no. Go go off, King. <laughs> it's like this is why they're horrible to work with. Absolutely fucking horrible absolutely fucking horrible and i can't fucking do it this is why i'd rather work in with with men because it's logic you can see how you feel you know there'll be debates people try to be right you know what i'm saying because if you argue with a man he'll try to be right he won't just be emotional he'll try to attack your points with logic facts things that you can look up and research and that are evident it's not just going to be some emotional garbage that comes out of nowhere that they can't even explain so yeah guys me personally because because i used to work i used to like work like jobs where i would deal with people like restaurant jobs because some women would give me choosing signals and shit but I'll, t I'll tell you another story so when i was working at the restaurant the reason i kind of stopped talking to girls because this happened actually i want to say this year and a little bit of last year there was a girl that came in she was like a tall slender girl she had a really unique name i forgot what the fuck it was we were having a good conversation but then she sat down to go eat, and I felt like she wanted me to talk to her, but other people came in. So since she had a u u unique name, I looked her up on Facebook or whatever. I talked to her. She was like, don't ever fucking message me again. I'm never going to this restaurant again. You're a fucking creep. Don't talk to me again. Bye. She said some variation of that. It was really aggressive. I never talked Wait. Wait a minute. Wait. So oh, hold on. I got to hear that again. The reason I kind of stopped talking to girls, because this happened actually, I want to say, this year and a little bit of last year. There was a girl that came in. She was like a tall, slender girl. She had a really unique name. I forgot what the fuck it was. We were having a good conversation, but then she sat down to go eat, and I felt like she wanted me to talk to her, but other people came in. So since she had a u u unique name, I looked her up on Facebook, and whenever I talked to her, she was like, don't ever fucking message me again. I'm never going to this restaurant again. You're a fucking creep. Don't talk to me again. Bye. She said some variation of that. It was really aggressive. I never talked to her again. Then Okay, I'm going to play the rest of this. Maybe maybe there's a change. Another girl came in. This girl nope, another girl. Okay. Uh <laughs> Okay, so a few things here bother me. Yeah. One, when he was saying about like how I like I like arguing with men because they try to be right rather than emotional. I've had more worse <laughs> debates with men because they think they're right and that the actual points they are arguing are completely like like a fallacy yeah yeah then i have with quote unquote an emotional woman <laughs> and two 
<laughs> she said, you're a creep, don't message me again. Yeah. What makes you think that, like, if you're working at a restaurant, you should Facebook one of your customers? You're entitled to try that. to yeah. reach out to them. Like, hey, you got you got yeah, that, you know, foot-long chicken bacon ranch for me today. I thought you were really hot. Want to go out? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I would be, okay, I would be freaked out. <laughs> Okay, even if, like, all right, I'm going to change the context of this slightly, slightly, okay? Say this is me, and it's a male server, because, like, I get along well with everybody. So, but I'm going to take the the whole uh, gender part of this out of it. It's me, and it's a male waiter, and we're just having, you know, the casual conversation. Hey, how you doing? Blah, blah, And, like, you know, talking maybe shit, maybe the small talk type shit. If that guy looked me up... After I left and like messaged me like, Hey, how's it going? I was your waiter. And I, and I would be weirded the fuck out. Like I, I would probably not say anything and just block them. But like that, that's weird to me. That's, that's a different level. Weird. Like you're going out of your way to open a line of conversation with someone you have literally like you not gotten any permission, any cues or anything you just thought okay maybe she wanted you to talk to her more at, at that time maybe like holy shit and so like on to add to the creep factor of that that he he said she had a unique name okay cool but then you still probably went through like all the photos and shit to confirm it was her well and, and here's the thing too it's like what really bothers me is the fact that like oh she had a really unique name <laughs> oh, okay so she was your customer how do you know her name yeah. oh you probably stared at her debit card that she paid with yeah yeah and like memorize her debit card yeah because it's one of those transactional yeah. experiences where you don't really give a name like yeah and it's like you put in that level of effort that's incredibly creepy yeah Holy shit, bro. God damn. Girl was like a lawyer. She was, we were having a good conversation. It was just me and her in the store. I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah. She's being all cool. I'm like, can I get your number? She's like, no. I'm like, fuck. Like, you know what I mean? Cause, and then, you know, like I, I try and it's just like, I, every time I try, I get told no and I get reminded why I don't fucking try. Right? It's and every worse. time I... Huh? It's, it's worse. He hit on her at the restaurant and she turned him down. So then he decided to no. go and look her up on Facebook. This is a different girl. This is a different girl. Because he did start off with another girl. So the number oh. is another girl. But Jesus like... Christ. I was like reading way <laughs> differently. Than... <laughs> I'm like, holy shit. He's even more unhinged than Chris Chan. When I have God. a job where I work with women. I get reminded why I don't need to be fucking working with women because most guys aren't like me. Most guys are going to let a woman distract them, lie to them. I have a solution for this man. I have a fantastic solution for this man. So he doesn't like to work with women. Uh, he said that he is okay with uh, autistic lesbians. So I'm going to extrapolate this. He should work at a gay bar. No, but it has to be a lesbian bar. I don't know if it has because to be a lesbian have, bar. Well, they have to be autistic lesbians. <laughs> because then that way, there's no way that they they are attracted to him. Because if he goes to the gay bar, he's going to be worried about them looking at him like he's a piece of meat. True, true. I could see that coming out of him. Yeah, yeah. I I, I just thought it through as the fact that like he hates working with women, and. Uh, he, he was fine with the, the other gay individual so far. So I was like, okay, gay bar. Gay bar will work. Janitor at gay bar. Well, see, that's the thing. He's okay with the one gay man. But, like, we can't, like, expand it out because, like, I don't think he'll be okay with the entire gay community. True, true. Oh, man. And you know what's funny is, like, if he's a fit dude, like, it would be an easy in for him. Because <laughs> he, right? he could have the sex appeal. Like, uh, I, I don't know. Like, yeah, it's like the fucking Reddit story. Oh my God. It, that just reminds me of the Reddit story of the whole. Uh, did you ever hear about the whole my, I think my husband's gay Reddit story? I've encountered many of them. Which specific <laughs> one? Okay. So this one was uh, a woman on Reddit. She's like, I think my husband's gay. Like, he's been going out to the gay bars a lot, and, like, it's really suspect, and, like, I don't know how to do it. Like, he's got, like, 
weird uh weird outfits and stuff that like i've seen and shit and like i really think that he's into men and like there's all these theories that go around and everything and there's an update later on he was working at the gay bar to afford a engagement ring oh my god <laughs> uh, wasn't that the story that i think south park parodied they might have. With, they might with have. Butter's dad going to that sauna or whatever, like the gay sauna. They might have. Uh, I swear to God, it was a Reddit story. I swear. Because I remember, because I remember that episode where like Butter's dad was gay and then they tried to kill him because they put him in the car. <laughs> remember when they put him in the car in the car and they put it in neutral and he just goes down in the river and floats off because he just wants to go for his birthday dinner oh my it turned god out his dad was having like gay affairs <laughs> like i, I could have swore that, that that was the story that inspired that episode it might have been it might have been i wouldn't put it past him i mean they get a lot of popular culture media type stuff and internet culture they've taken stuff from that they're derivative from that so i wouldn't be surprised manipulate them and use them and get nothing in return nothing in fucking return and it happens every time every time there'll be some guy who get who gets with a chick at work they break up then the fucking job harmony fucking goes out the window because now he's not fucking her she's mad okay i'm gonna pause this for a second uh i need to go to the restroom as per usual i'm going to let this play and so i'll be right back it's gonna take me like two seconds all right at him he's mad at her it causes this rift people gotta pick sides it's fucking stupid this is why I, this is why i wish i was born you know way earlier like back when they back when men and women work separately back when men like i like i heard a story about walt disney where walt disney would have the married men work with married men and um unmarried men work with unmarried men and i thought that was so good because it's like guys just do better when there's other men around because we act more on merit honor strength now don't get me wrong there's some piece i've worked with some piece of shit guys but like i said when i challenge them i mean I'll, I'll just keep fucking going why not there was a guy i used to work with right he was a piece of shit he was pissing me off one day so this is what i would do work would start at six there was a park guys let me, i would wake up i would wake up at 3 30 in the morning i would run from my house to the gym work out till 5 30 get there at get to work at six work starts at 6 30 i would do push-ups from six o'clock to 6 25 i would walk and i would do that every day i swear to god well at least five days a week because on the weekends i wouldn't have the reason to run to work and shit but anyway i would do that and i would challenge him to fight me this guy stopped fucking challenging me and shit because like that's the thing with guys like okay what did i miss <laughs> oh my god patrick <laughs> he literally was going on and like saying like i wish i was born back then like when men and women work separately and stuff like that oh and god I, and as he's walking down right like he's walking down this street here and he's basically that like that you have this black male literally screaming into the cell phone basically saying he re he wishes he was born during the era of segregation <laughs> <laughs> oh god oh like, it irony. literally writes itself it oh literally my god writes itself. this is fucking amazing <laughs> i almost want to look up another video by him and skip and save the DVD, our DVDR stuff for another day. This oh, so, like he's so not self-aware. Oh god, because this guy's this guy's funny. It's just he, from the lack of self-awareness, he's funny. Guys will do a cost-benefit analysis. If if you had a bully or an enemy, if he gets the feeling you will kill him or beat the shit out of him or that you might do some shit he can't predict, he will stop. But there, it's not that with women. Women do not think. This is the great women. This is the crazy part. The reason women pick criminals and killers is because that's who they like, guys. You will not believe. I've seen it firsthand. You will not believe how many women like fucking criminals. When I was a correction officer, I almost got into a fight with an inmate. This girl's gonna tell me that was so sexy. I'm like, what the fuck, you dumb bitch? But it's like they like violence, guys. They like abusers. They like causing chaos. That's why they're terrible to work with. Because if they're bored, they're gonna start a problem that can be to the detriment of your life and career. We've seen this so many times. I saw. I remember when Andrew Tate posted a video of this girl lying. Oh, we found the problem. Well, no, we found the problem like 
15 minutes ago. Now we just have like now we just have like a bandage on the problem with Andrew Tate. So we, this... we found the context of the problem. Well, I would say the problem was back when he admitted that the only people he liked were autistic lesbians. <laughs> like oh, that was God. the problem. Like this Andrew Tate's just like sort of like, you know, like seasoning for it. <laughs> it's not the full course meal. It's just like, you know, the dinner rolls. Oh my God. God. <laughs> Fear. We've seen this so many times. I saw. I remember when Andrew Tate posted a video of this girl lying, saying that she got raped by an Uber driver. They they just like to lie, and the other women do not call them out. Everything I'm saying is true. You know what the fuck I'm saying is true, and you know these women aren't gonna fucking call it those pieces of shit women. So they just don't really? need to be fight now. I get some. Huh? Really? Because <laughs> I've known many women that have back during like Katie bugs that were like actually raped that were chomping at the bit to tear katie bugs down for basically mocking their trauma yeah like you're obviously not looking in the right places because women especially the ones that have been hurt like that do not appreciate you minimizing their assault no because it, it takes away media clicks. any ground that they've gained it takes it away like I, I, holy oh my yeah, like, god this, this, this is why the Me Too movement failed, right? Yeah. Because the women that came out and spoke about their experiences then got literally drowned out by the false accusers, and it killed the movement. Yeah. Yeah, to the point that eventually it kind of came full circle again with, like, more of the the Weinstein stuff, I would say. was No, Weinstein was stuff was the start of it, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, no, that was, like, uh, that was like the powder keg that really, like... Set it off. Know, yeah, yeah so I guess views. the the culmination of it would be the fucking Cosby stuff then. Yeah, yeah, I would say that was probably when it hit the fever pitch. Yeah. It was during, like, the Cosby era and then, like, all of the other stuff about Hollywood, like, the Kevin Spacey shit. Yeah. Was another one. Yep. Now you got, like, the quiet on the set stuff, which I still, I'm gonna be honest, I have a hot take on that stuff. I yeah. still do not totally believe that fucking dude. What, Dan Schneider? Not Dan Schneider, uh, the the guy that like they were like, oh, he's coming on to tell his side of the story. The guy that was like supposedly abused and all that. Oh yeah, I forget his fucking name. Uh, he was one of the fucking uh, Jonas Brothers, wasn't he? Oh, okay, yeah, no, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> but him, like, I I have a hot take. He has yeah. a case against him, where there was some stuff with like an underage kid. And, like, I just can't get past how fishy it is and how weird it is that we're just going to let it slide. Well, that's kind of, like, what I'm thinking about, like, Drake Bell. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because, like, it's one of those things where it's, like, it would not shock me that yeah. Drake Bell kind of thought it was okay. Yeah, that's who I'm talking about. Yeah. Behavior. Yep. It was learned behavior from being in Hollywood. Because if you look at all of them, like, you know, um, Amanda Bynes. Yeah, my wife okay. and I, we had huge contentions on that. Because I told her at the end of it, I'm like, I am not buying Drake's story. I'm not. I was like, why did this dude run to Mexico? Well, I well, one of the reasons, though, is actually that's kind of funny, is his music career took off in Mexico. Yeah, I get that. But, like... It's, uh... it's suspicious. Yeah. Like, Basically, my thing is, I think Drake's guilty, but in my opinion, I think it was learned behavior. Yeah, I can agree with that. that. And I actually said that to my wife. Like, I was like, look, you know, I get it. I get it. He's uh, an abused kid and all this stuff. I was like, but where's the proof that therapy and everything works then? I was like, because in any case, he supposedly went to therapy and all this shit, and he ends up doing the same stuff. Well, I think that's the issue is that he's just so traumatized that I think like it it takes years upon years upon years upon years of healing and that it's not a given thing. Yeah, and like, like it's I, not a given cure for it. I think once a once Drake was violated, I think that yeah. set him on the path of like this is okay. Yeah. And no amount of therapy can undo that sort of conditioning. Yep. Yeah, like, I mean, well, and the fact that, like, I don't think he took therapy seriously. Because if I remember, if I remember that show correctly, he only went to therapy for a short period of time. Yeah. And it's like, you know, a short period of time is not going to solve the problem there. 
Like, well, yeah, and someone I've in his family did shit. not take his therapy seriously. No, no, and I, like, I've been in therapy for shit, and there are times that, like, I've wanted to quit because I've had to bring up such painful memories and confront things that, like... Yeah. I just be like, you know what, I'd just rather have this be buried. I'd rather this be buried. Fuck it, I, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. I can't do this. And I think when it's something as strong as what Drake went through, like, you know, being violated as a child. Yeah. It is so easy to run that that's what happened. And I can see a parent being like, oh, like, look at him. He's breaking down. Like, you know, I love my kid. I can't do that. And like thinking you're helping him by like removing him from the pain when that's really what you need to let him feel to overcome yeah how he yeah. was violated I, I think they allowed him to do a lot of symptomatic things like he then got into drugs and all that shit and it's like okay that's a typical hollywood child uh abused child trope i mean you could look at a lot of stuff like uh look at macaulay Corey Culkin. haim Corey haim yeah he died from it he died from an overdose because he could never shake it yeah like and it's like i think they that's how they uh, they learn to cope because you've got a, a normally a parent situation where they're driven because you're the earner at that level. At that level, I want to specify. You're the earner, typically, in the family. Yeah. And so, like, they're driven by your income to do, to almost be, do what's best for keeping you employed. So, like, it, it can lead to some very tenuous and very abusive situations. And I, yeah. but I just, it, I, I don't, I don't know. I think with all that, like there was a lot of stuff with that, that kind of keyed me off that I don't think he's totally as innocent as he portrays. There's the whole fact that the father was chased out and the father seemed to be more level headed of the people as far as what was portrayed through that show. I don't know the mother, the mother didn't really have any input in that show. Well, that could have been one of those situations, too, where the father was like, you know, pull him out. This is too much. And then yeah. the mother wanted his career to keep going. And that's yeah. kind of why that like, like, because if you look at it, like, you know, I know we say in the we mock people for saying this, you know, in, in this community so much about like the power dynamic, the power dynamic. Well, yeah. this is one of those situations that like you legitimately have billion dollar companies with a legal team that's stretched as long as, you know, your grocery list. Yeah. You know what I mean? That like literally can like find 12 ways from Sunday to fuck your life up for the rest of your life. If you say anything. Yeah. And like, there's, and this, there's also this the, the power dynamic. The micro, it's almost like a micro power dynamic in the scale of things when you look at it. Because there's not just that, there's also the parent-child power dynamic. Like, I think yeah. that that tr truly takes place a lot in a lot of these instances where these kids are subjected to things. It's because, you know, the parent says, well, you have to do this. Yeah. Like, and, it, and it just puts the kid in a position where they feel like they don't have an out. Yeah. And, like, you know, I can say that, you know, as a as a kid, like, if I was in a situation like that, like, you know, and I came from poverty. Yeah. I, I would view it as my job to grin and bear it for the for benefit the family. of my family. Yeah. yeah. Like, and then you add, like, that pressure on these kids. And then it's, like, to the point where it's, like, you're literally tying a, you know, a rope around their neck and you're just waiting for the chair to get kicked. Yep. Until, you know, they're too old, they age, they age out, you know, you kick them out and you bring in the next generation. Yep. Like, we saw it with, like, all that. Like, why didn't Lori Beth do anything after all that? Because she said something about it and she was blacklisted. Yeah, I agree with that and I understand that. I think it's awful. I do. Uh, but, yeah, I just, I, I, to bring it back, I don't think that uh, Drake Bell is as innocent as he was portrayed in that show. Um, it became a big point of contention between my wife and I like that. Oh, he was abused. I was like, I get it. I get it. He was an abused child, but that does not give him permission to abuse other children. No. And that's, that's more than one of those things. Like it gets into that very extremely nuanced discussion of like, at what line do we accept victims creating victims? victims? Yeah. And like, you know, the victimized, the victim becomes a victimizer. Yeah. Because, like, yes, it Drake was probably horrifically abused then. Yeah. But that doesn't mean it's okay. But yeah. we should also then look at it and be like, well, we should probably go after the guy that started the chain of this. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. 
And in this case, I know there was multiple people, but like, it's just, it, it really is like, it's, uh, it's an, un, it's, a, it's an unfortunate circumstance. It is, um, but it is, it is avoidable. That's the big thing. Like, I feel like it is genuinely avoidable whether people want to or not. Like the, that's the thing. Like, you, you know, like you're saying, like, you would have to force him to go through and see things and do talk about things that he might not want to discuss, but it would yeah. probably benefit him in the longer run for his whole like lifespan to deal with this stuff. Exactly. And Hollywood has become like an Ouroboros of sexual abuse. Yeah. Like, and, but nobody's willing to like take the machete and cut the snake's head off. No. And I, I don't totally understand it. I think it's just the wealth. I think it is a wealth thing. It is, and I think it's, like, one of those things, too. It's, like, you know, not to bring it back to, like, internet drama, but with, like, Rakeda and shit. Like, how when, when he got money and, and fame and, like, power in his little sector, it yep. went to his head, and he thought he was untouchable. I just think it's, like, you know, you have these billion, trillion-dollar companies that literally run the world. You know, like, you're going to fucking sit there and tell me that, like, Viacom is yeah. going to stop? They're one of their greatest earners? Yeah. Like, you know, Dan Schneider made Viacom how much money over the years? Yeah. Well, look at how <laughs> like, profitable he was directly just to Nickelodeon. Look at how many shows he, he created. Like, exactly. How, how, not just that. They're looking yeah. at it like, how do you get rid of this talent with all this stuff that's being said, and we have no way to prove it in their eyes, I'm saying. Well, exactly. Like, as an actor that was on Good Burger to Keenan and Kel to the Amanda show yeah. to Drake and Josh, like, to the newer generation of stuff that I don't really know about since I kind of aged out of yeah, Nickelodeon. Like, the like Hannah Montana and stuff like that. Victorious. Yeah. Like, yeah. Victoria. Like, what happened with um, Jeanette McCurdy. Yeah. With her mom. Like, I don't know if you've ever heard about that. I've heard some of it. I've not looked deeply into it, but yeah, I've heard awful well, yeah. things there. Like, and it. Yeah. It, unfortunately a it doesn't surprise me <laughs> yeah and she, and she like literally wrote a book that was called i think it's called like i'm glad my mom my mom is dead and i'm glad or like i'm glad my yeah. mom is dead yeah and she like went through and like some of the things that she's saying is horrific and it's like i can easily see drake going through that i can easily see yeah you know these people because these are like literal fucking people that are willing to sell their soul to the devil and their kids yeah Especially, For especially money. if if it's the if it's the power if the parent of the child is the person who's driven by that money, oh, they're they'll do anything. They don't care. Look I believe Britney it gets Spears. to a point like yeah, it, it, they genuinely don't care. Like look at Britney Spears. Like she was locked in that conservatorship. Oh God, yeah. For what two decades? Yeah. And the whole point of a conservatorship is that this person is so unfunctional yeah they cannot make their own decisions yet she's recording albums and touring why the fuck is she in a conservatorship yeah and doing all this stuff basically being milk dry and now if you look at her people are like saying she's crazy she's crazy it's like yeah because you stunted her growth for 20 years yeah she's still 17 18 22 she yeah. didn't get to fucking live because you had her shoved in a mansion until you put her on an airplane to fly her out and parade her on stage and yep. then you put her back in the mansion gilded cage but yeah it's uh it's it's insane i'm gonna get back to this guy get off of the detract but like yeah <laughs> anger anger <laughs> hate fat people hate fat people hate fat people <gasps> I, oh, fat I know some women who are good in... huh I have, I'm fat, self-loathing time. Activate. <laughs> I know. Internalized. Internalized. Yes. I don't know what it's called. It's like internalized. It's not misogyny, but fat misogyny or whatever. Weight. weight misogyny. <laughs> weight misogyny, yes. I weight maxed. <laughs> oh, shit. Pieces of shit women. So they just don't need to be fucking now. I get some, well, I know some women who are good and great, great. I, I bet you do. But a majority of them don't need to be fucking working with us because they ruin fucking everything. They don't call out their, see guys, this, this is what I've never liked about being a man. Well, <laughs> the expectations of being a man. Women expect men to call out bad men, to protect them from bad men, you know, all that stuff. They expect men to police each other, but we don't demand women police each other. Like if, if a woman committed a crime or rape, other women should get on her ass, ostracize her, and punish her. But that's not what's happening. And I don't know why. This is why I really just don't give a fuck. Like, 
I'm kind of rambling, but you get my point, guys. You, you understand why. If I, I'm, I'm just basically saying, look, I'm happy. I'm about to get a job where it's only guys. I learn a trade. I, I, I gain experience. I get better. Because that's, that's honestly going to be how men protect themselves moving forward. You've seen this already. You've seen how they're lying on Russell Brand. You see how they're trying to lie on. They lied on the fucking baseball player guy. I'm so mad I forgot his name. But you know what I mean? Like, they just lie, guys. They lie, and they don't go to jail for it. And you should be pissed off about this. Because it can be you. I don't mean to yell, but it's just, guys, this is a fucking problem. And I would hate for your kids or for you to experience losing your job because a bitch lied. And we know they lie. I don't fucking know, but I feel better now. I'm going to work with that. <laughs> do you? Do you? After three or four stories, Jesus Christ, bro. And you know this, like he said three or four stories and he's still just on, like he reminds me of DSP. And the way that, like, all of his stories are negative. Like, he can't list a single positive thing. Did we ever like, find out, in the end, why he wants to leave that job? I, I just assumed it was women. <laughs> <laughs> there, there was a woman that was not an autistic lesbian. He just yeah. had a fucking meltdown. I mean, we, we, heard the, we heard the whole hiring arc of it, and then nothing. Like, we went on these tangents, and that's been it. Oh my god. I feel like he's lore dumping us to so sort of like explain <laughs> it. Like he has to drop his backstory. Yeah. There's got to be another good one. Oh man. I'm a fake self. This I'm, That's a multi-parter. What, what's that first one up there? If Doctor Disrespect is a pedophile, then so is Taylor Swift. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I don't know if I want to take the easy bait on that one. Oh man. Why all great empires restricted women's rights? <laughs> you know what's funny about that? One of the greatest empires, the Eastern Empire of Byzantium, yeah. that outlived the Western Roman Empire, Justinian was actually a forward thinker and gave more rights to women in that time in history than we've seen. Like women could own property and have jobs. Like he was like almost like an inspiration for modern day feminism and equal rights. <laughs> and the Eastern Empire survived way longer and only crumbled because the, the Venetian sacked Constantinople in the Third Crusade, and that's when the um, Ottomans came in. If they weren't sacked, that they would have still stayed strong. <laughs> oh my god. Like, that, like surprise, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I want to like a, a good story. Oh, man. There's so many good ones here. Holy shit. This guy has a lot of content. Everything I forgot to mention about working at the prison. I just like how, like, 90% like ninety percent of the thumbnails are the same. It's like him standing underneath that same building with that light. Yeah, yeah. And when it's not, it's him in his room. My comfort. <laughs> Only men matter. Society will be fine with unhappy women. Oh, my God. Women love to ruin their lives for attention. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. I don't know if I disagree with that one. <laughs> You've got special circumstances, though. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Whoa. Nope. Go on here. Go on to this one. Hi. Good evening, gentlemen. Hope all you thing is going well. Already can't talk for the first 10 seconds of the video. But yeah, I hope everything's going well for you guys. So, today was funny at work. The foreman's like, the guy who's training me for the, an apprenticeship and everything. He's like, so how's that girl? He's always asking me about, <laughs> today he was like, you know, I pray you find a nice vegan girl. Cause he always tries to offer me food and I'm like, I can't eat it cause I'm vegan and stuff. And he's, that was just funny as shit. <laughs> it was hilarious. Um, he Wait, is. is he Vegan Gains 2.0. So he's admitting he's filled with soy? <laughs> <laughs> he's got the same eat. shirt on in every video Shadows pointed out. <laughs> doesn't, he wears the same shirt and he doesn't eat protein like a real man. Oh my god. Okay, okay Vegan Gains confirmed. He's like the great value Vegan Gains. <laughs> But that thing with that is, 
I don't think I'll even really get with that girl. Because like I said, she she fucking said her brother is taller than me. I still I still think that Wow. <laughs> I can't even comprehend this. Oh my god. I can't get with that girl because she said my brother or her brother's taller than me. That doesn't mean she wants to fuck her brother. I don't even know. Like I <laughs> I'm so fucking lost. That's weird, bro. I never, I never dated a girl or went out date with a girl and compared her to my sister or my mom. I don't know. Maybe I don't fucking know. But anyway, children. Let's talk about it. Marriage, family. You know, in the black community, I would hear people say they beat their kids so that the cops don't beat them and that they won't go to jail or, you know. Right, people beat their kids. People think it's right to beat their kids, okay? We all agree on that? I mean, I'm, I'm anti-violence. I don't think anybody should be beat. But I think we should run that through logically. Because why is it okay to beat your kids, but not your wife, okay? Now, like I said again, I'm not pro-violence. I'm anti-violence, I'm non-aggression principle. I'm, I'm, I really don't. He's a nap. Oh my God. Oh God, he's a vegan libertarian. Oh, oh, like violence. Like I, I work out so people leave me the fuck alone. <laughs> but um, but really, why is it though? Because this is what I think is so weird. Women always talk about they want a man to fight for the relationship, and I really think they mean they want a man to beat the shit out of them, <laughs> like to really like fight them and restrain them. And <laughs> I mean, there's a reason women go for abusers, right? <laughs> all women go for abusers the ones that do generally have been abused in the past and it's comfortable for them oh my but not God. every single woman wants an abuser and this logic is going to be so flawed i know it i know it going into it and i'm here for know. it I don't even know if I can debate it because it's so <laughs> stupid. Yeah. Like, I don't, like, I think he might have outwitted me from, <laughs> oh, like, underwitting me <laughs> so hard that I can't think about it. Oh, my God. That, there's a reason for that. This wouldn't be this phenomenon. Like, Jeremy Meeks almost killed two people. Women all want to suck his dick. It's, you, you, do you understand? Do you understand? Like, you have to learn to be a piece of shit. Not saying that all those guys are pieces of shit, but you have to really understand that women want that primal, threatening, dangerous energy from men. Wait, did he just say, like, not all abusers are pieces of shit? Like, was that the motif he's going for here? <laughs> oh my god. Okay, okay. Just my old friend. I really tend to leave stuff uh apolitical here. Like I, I don't care. But this is the equivalent of like Trump sitting there and saying like some of them are good when he was talking about the fucking Carolina March. Like I I <laughs> just stick with they're all bad. Just stick with it. Like you, you you're not gonna hurt feelings. <laughs> I mean, it's not like you care about hurting feelings. You literally said you hate everyone outside of autistic lesbians. So, like, <laughs> having empathy has sailed, like, four months ago when you made that video. <laughs> Which is why I think they gravitate towards thugs. Because I remember when I was a CO, and I was, um, you know, just watching Feed Up. And uh, the dude's talking about, because he's making the food, he's like, Man, I just can't stop putting my hands on my baby mother. <laughs> and she kept taking her back. That was the funniest part of me. <laughs> just like, it, it, it was just this thing where... I I cannot wait to hear him explain this. Yeah. It was funny to hear about the guy locked up in prison that I was watching talk about, I can't help beating my partner. Yeah, get, let, sell me your cognitive distortion, please. <laughs> Tell me, please. <laughs> That's what women like. And we should make that popular again. It used to be in newspapers and magazines that you might have to slap your wife around to get her to act right. You know? Because this is... 
I am praying. I am praying that he talks about rule of thumb here. This is what I think is so weird about it. Why people try to act like, because like I said, I'm against hitting kids, but for the people who like to beat their kids, you might as well just beat your wife too. <laughs> like, <laughs> for real, like let's, let's think about, let's, let, let's think about this for a second. I remember when my mom, my mom would tell me stuff like, don't go telling her business. She would tell me that all the time, right? So I, I wouldn't fucking say anything about my mom. But meanwhile, my mom would tell my business and I'm just a kid. But you know what I mean? Like it was, it was these rules that just didn't make any sense, you know? And if I fucking told her business, I was in the wrong. I was in the, okay, I, I'm waiting for this car. Like a lot of these people who drive, they're just, it's like he didn't no turn signal. He's cause he's going fast. Like he's just gonna go straight then he makes this right. I'm like, okay, well good. Um, but the point I'm saying is that women subject children, women torture, like Jack Posobiec said something on Twitter. He said that it's abortion that's killing children. And I get he has a lot of women followers, so he can't just say that women are killing children. Women are responsible for 82% of child murder. I left that comment on that post when he made that. Um, because it's the truth, right? Like, what, look at what we allow women to do. Women are, what is it like? We're up to six female teachers raping middle school boys. Like, they're allowed to rape kids and kill kids. Because, like I said, they're responsible for 82% of child murder. Think about the Pareto principle, guys. 80-20 rule? That's a problem. Um, no. <laughs> the only reason we figured out those women raped those kids was because they were charged with statutory rape. <laughs> like, there was an actual conviction yeah. there. Yeah. And, and your solution for domestic violence is violence. more domestic violence. <laughs> like, this like, is like, like the it. solution for murder is more murder. <laughs> it's like fuck it you know tommy gives the attitude punch him in the face and if you know alicia dares to talk back to you make sure like your wife knows her place too <laughs> like, Jesus. What, what, like what <laughs> the fuck like like this is insane like this is like one of those society like this is one of those arguments that like really annoy me <laughs> of, like well like you know if you can't stop all drug dealers then just don't to decriminalize drugs i, I because... while you're talking i want to look something up <laughs> all right like it just it just like like that's not a solution of like oh yeah we can't shut down the cartel so we should just embrace the cartel like <laughs> that's that's that, no like and then like like then mentioning like jack presovic and talking about like abortion and like the the viewpoint that like you know that there's uh the child upon conception is considered a child because of the argument of that the soul also enters the egg alongside the sperm is equivalent to like women kill like 82% of children. <laughs> well, like, like, like uh, that just doesn't make any sense. Like even if you were to factor in abortions, that is just an insane leap in logic. Okay. So I just looked it up. I won't bring it on stream. Okay. So, uh, I'm trying to think of how to say this word. So, neonicide, which is like infant, in, uh, infanticide, right? Like, uh, yeah. murder, murder of small babies and stuff like that, right? It's higher likelihood for women to do that. But once they reach a certain age, it becomes higher for the, the males to eliminate the children. Like, so it becomes ultimately what, ha what's funny is, is it becomes equal. Well, the funny thing too is, like you said, like neonicide, like, it, like yeah, like women do that higher because generally they have the birth and then they like put the kid in a dumpster. Yeah. Like that. That's like where the whole like you know stereotypical dumpster baby thing comes in. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like you know, you know what I mean. Like that's where that comes in, but that doesn't mean that eighty-two percent of children are murdered by their mothers. It, even if you, even if you add in the abortion statistics, if you're being charitable and even adding that in yeah this is like and honestly i found one okay here's a couple more like the studies like what are we going to okay that's not even applicable like it's not like like infanticide and stuff like that it's uh it's like okay yeah it's predominantly women i don't know where he's getting this statistic from i feel like he's just pulling a number out that feels right because he's also counting abortion <sighs> 
and he's like you know stacking the deck so to speak like the same way that like you know oh this dude died in a car crash and he had covid it was totally covid you know what i mean like he's it feels like he's trying to pump the numbers to make the argument rather than making the argument from the numbers well like okay all right all right i might give a little bit of a hot take here all right but like all right so abortions for the most part where they are still legal um you only need one consenting party correct so you only you only need the one consenting parent so would you prefer in, in this guy's logic would you prefer that it be similar to like a uh oh like a hysterectomy and stuff like that where like i find it absurd that i would have to sign off on my wife to get a hysterectomy yeah okay where like it would totally prevent the uh, the limited circumstances of her ever having a child yeah but, right. that's like that whole my body my choice argument yeah coming in. so like so like does this guy think that oh it would significantly decrease the number if you went to that type of system which again i think is absurd or like i, I don't understand like his logic here like he thinks it's just a higher proclivity because of what reasoning like how about we were talking about like women that have been abandoned in one shape one way shape or form like that don't feel right raised and like they don't feel like they necessarily meet the their standards of parenthood yeah like well, there, I... there's a lot of reasoning behind this man like you there's so many niche situations you can't paint with broad strokes like you're doing right and like and like here's my thing too is like you know i don't like the idea of abortion but that's for me yeah so like if you can have an abortion and not feel bad about it then yeah go for it i wouldn't i know that if i had a child on the way and i knew if my partner had aborted them that would utterly devastate me yeah but at, the, at the same point i'm not going to sit here and moralize and say you have to believe what i do if you can do it in good conscience and that's your choice yeah i couldn't but i'm not going to tell you that you can but then it gets into this weird argument, like we have, like for example, like for example, like rape babies, or um, yeah, there's children, that pe- people who didn't want to get have a child, but like maybe like you said, like their partner wouldn't sign off on it. Yeah, that will like is it better to abort the baby or have the baby be born and then either be severely abused, neglected, or thrown into foster care? Yeah. Or that kid will get passed around and potentially abused in that way. I, there is no easy answer for any of this. Yeah, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna speak to a couple different sides of this argument. So first of all, I know somebody long ago. This is long ago. This is back. God, the fucking fourteen years ago now. That uh, was friends with my girlfriend at the time, best friends, and she had an abortion. And this girl didn't want to have the abortion, did want to have the kid, but knew that her partner wasn't going to help take care of the kid and thought that really, honestly, it would be best that to go through with this, right? You have no idea how mentally scarring that was to that person to go through that. Like, it's not as easy of a choice as you think, because at the same time, when all this stuff happens... The, the woman still has all her fucking hormonal boost going on from being pregnant and everything. So all the emotions and everything are intensified. And it makes yeah. the whole situation harder and harder to even cope with. Like, and then there's the other side of it. Like, okay, well, are you also going to then count for, like, uh, miscarriages? Because there's right. a higher proclivity for miscarriages. Like, yeah. and, and that... And that's just the body naturally rejecting the child. And I I had gone through that to some extent at one point. So, like, it's... I, I, his logic is just so fucking flawed. And I could take it apart so many different fucking ways. It is. Because it doesn't even come across as logical. It comes across as the end point is I want to hate women right now. And I'm going to twist yeah. facts and logic to make my point that women are the victimizers and they kill babies. Yeah. Like that's just, it's literally you get to the end point and then you try to backtrack and then twist the things to make your narrative rather than making your narrative based around what you have discovered scientifically. Yeah. 
Yeah, you know and this is mean? this is disregarding like the fact that like okay, uh, males are obviously the higher proclivity for being rapists. Okay, and so then how many males have raped out there? Because you do, typically in the middle of your rape, you don't sit there and put on protection. Uh, how right. many males in there have fathered children? And then are you then throwing those women in with being the murderers? Kind of going back to the same argument you made. Like, okay, so, uh, you know, where where does your logic lie on that? You're calling now a woman a, a murderer to some extent. And you're not even taking into the consideration of, like, the facts of how it got to this situation. How yeah, it got to this point. Not. Here's another situation, too. You have a baby and it goes to term it is destroying the mother's body and you have to make yeah. the choice yeah do you abort the do you abort the child and save the child and let the mother die or does the mother live and you get rid of the child yeah. you know and then like at what point does that make her a murderer you know she in all intents and purposes wanted to love that baby to the point where she even considered dying for it yeah Should like an ectopic pregnancy a, and stuff like that yeah, yeah. Should she be considered a murderer, or should she be allowed to live and maybe foster a child, someone, and give that love that she couldn't give to her unborn baby that she had to tragically abort? Yeah. Like, you know, none of these are fair situations, and I know that these are outliers, but I think the outliers, because they are intensively emotionally and strong as they are, still need to be discussed. Yeah. Yeah, and depending on the term, too, you could bring in, like, okay— well, what about the women that choose because, you know, their their child is going to have some severe disability that they're maybe not mentally prepared to take care of? Like, OK, exactly. you can sit there. You can sit there and say all you want about, oh, you should be mentally prepared for no matter what's going to be thrown at you. There's shit you're never going to be mentally prepared for, like regardless of the situation. Well, yeah, like and, and then here's like the thing, too, like, you know, my child is autistic. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. High functioning, brilliant. Like yeah. he made a sewer system out of Legos with a real toilet that flushed yeah. and everything at, at the age of six. My cousin's daughter has a child that's autistic and he's nonverbal. He can just sit there and spin in a circle and he can't do anything else. Yeah. Are you, what kind of life is that? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like he's not like my kid that cause has the chance to be an engineer or, you know, a scientist or anything like that. This kid's life, like, he doesn't even understand suffering. Yeah. And and that's not even including other um, kids that, like, literally have actual, like, disabilities. Like, like, not to that point, to, like, physical disabilities. Yeah, like, born without missing organs and stuff like that. Like, uh... yeah just all sorts of different situations that like god it's a life of suffering on their behalf so we're we're you know it's kind of it's kind of fucked to say no matter what way you say it but like where would you rather them spend a lifetime of suffering and at this point you know a lifetime of suffering i think median age is still upwards of 80 years old so you're talking 80 years of living like that potentially yeah, yeah. It's almost a debate that then transitions into, like, what are your thoughts on euthanasia? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it, it, it's this weird sort of, like, juxtaposition that, like, you know, he's trying to say that all women are, 82% of women are murderers, but there are so many cases where potentially it's not Yeah, you, you can't murder. really justify it as a, a murderer. You know, like, okay, we're not talking about, like, the, what is it, Yates? What is their name? The one that drown all her kids, like we're we're not I, talking about Yates here. Yeah, or like uh, Peterson. You know yeah, what I mean, Lacey yeah. Peterson, or like you yeah. know what I mean. Like you know, we're talking about somebody that like some of these people have to make that tragic choice of like yeah. I have to do this, and some of it is a sin and a scar that these women carry for the rest of their lives to the point yeah. where like they literally can't function out of just the sheer guilt and depression of doing the one thing that they regret doing well and then and like, there's the other side of the argument okay so say say you outlaw all this and now now you've decreased the amount of murder of <gasps> women in the world right okay who takes care of all those kids because what happens if they're not able to yeah you know like yeah, what happens again, again this, back up. the special needs systems and all that that are needed you know like what happens if like the 
you ban all this stuff and okay now the child has to be born but the parents still don't want it so then it goes into the an orphan system foster system whatever you want to call it like th- there's goes, so many different like okay now you've just moved the problem to make it somebody else's but you're a good person you didn't eliminate that life like the, do you right. really feel better about yourself like the what about the life that kid's gonna leave look again at um oh god i can't think of their names uh hold on turpins the turpins okay the they had what was it? it's like 19 kids 16 kids Oh right? yeah, they had a massive fucking. They family. abused the living shit out of their children. Okay, they got locked up. They went to jail. Well, those kids went into the foster system. What happened? Two and three, two or three of them were put in a foster family. Where guess what? They were abused, and had and the shit beat out of them. And then those people went to jail. There's so many stories too of like foster kids being like sexually and physically assaulted. Yeah. Like, and it, it's one of those things, it's like, you know, we can sit here and make jokes, you know, like, Brian, about, like, you know, Brian Mullins, right? And be like, well, the yeah. obvious solution is to ship them off for a Christmas roast. <laughs> right? You know what I mean? Like, we can yeah. make, we can make the actual, we can make the joke, but, like, if we're actually arguing it, like, on a serious level like this, yeah. then what is that solution? Like, tell me what the solution is then, because I really want to know what his solution is then. Yeah. Because we've attacked this from all angles, what do you do then? Yeah. You know, in all of these different cases, and you go down with every case that we listed and tell tell me what the solution is. In kids that aren't functional, what do you do there? In, in parents that can't handle it, yeah. What are, what are your argument there? You know, okay, just in situations where like the parent has to die or the baby has to die, who dies? Yeah. You, are are okay. you going to tell me that you have the moral authority to decide life and death? This is not even taken into an account. Like, okay, what happens if you have a handicapped parent? You know, yeah. there, there's that. Where, like, okay, the child could be normal and everything, but they are physically not able to tend to the child. Like, they did, this was unplanned, called broken condom, whatever you want to call it. Like, there's so many nuanced situations that I, I feel like the better solution is to allow someone their choice and, you know, we'll take care of it either way. And, you know, they can make that choice. That's a choice they have to live with. Right. And that's one of those things. It's like, well, I heavily disagree on the idea of abortion and I would never partake in it. And like part of me, that's also because like after my kid, too, like I was like, you know, definitely pro do whatever. Yeah. I don't care. And then I had my son and I remember the first day in the hospital with him. Right. And he was crying and crying because he was um had in my uh, wife at the time had a. Uh, gestational diabetes so they were okay. pricking him every three hours yeah. to the point where his feet were black and blue and he was crying and crying i'm like hey there god hey there buddy how's it you know it's okay yeah. and then the minute he heard my voice he stopped crying yeah and he knew daddy was there and that's one of those situations where it's like and to think like i was so flippant about abortion with this yeah like if he might not i might not have this moment so yeah. sh- when that was that moment when that shifted for me but at the same point i'm not gonna also sit here and force a woman to carry something to term that she doesn't want to especially if you know it's one of those things like like well the mom doesn't want it but the dad will take it that's yeah. one of those situations where it's like okay well maybe have the child sign your custodial rights over to him yeah you know but like i'm also can't sit here and be like well because i had this moment everyone needs to if you can yeah. get away with maybe like sacrificing that moment not knowing the what if then that's your choice yeah i i would tell you though try because to me that was a life-changing moment but i'm not going to moralize you to yeah to do it you know like yeah yeah i just i don't know i i i think it's 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 not an easy decision either way because again like i said i've seen the side effects i've seen the after effects i should say of it like it's not easy on you either way it it just as much just as much uh pain and suffering if not maybe possibly more goes into having that choice and taking it than going through with maybe like the full term route right and like and i think sometimes some of it like you know with abortion too that we've become so desensitized because of what we see on the internet yeah 
Because, like, I remember, like, seeing that one person, that, like, insane chick that had that sign that was saying, like, I'll kill my kids. Yeah, yeah. And, like, you can sit here and be like, you know, abortion is wrong and stuff like that. Like, that woman's a horrible monster. But we're not discounting the woman that's sitting there with a knife holding against her wrist. And yeah. she just had to abort her child because it would have killed her. And she doesn't feel like living now with the guilt. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, they they are not the same. And to think that is absolutely crazy on this guy's part. Yeah. All right, I'll keep playing. We'll see where we go with this guy. <laughs> that's a fucking problem. <laughs> like, that, that's really a problem. And they get away with it. And I think we've given them a license to torture and kill kids. And, then, and we haven't really examined that. And we haven't really tried to right that wrong. You know, because to me, if, if it's okay to beat children, it should be okay to beat your wife or your girlfriend. I'm serious. You know, because here's the thing: if, and this is the sad truth about women. And me personally, this is why I think. Because me personally, I, I know I talk about this, but I don't even think I could personally put my hands on a woman. Like me personally, like I just, I just been trained not to. Like I'll just keep my space, push her away, but actually like piece her up and slap her around. I don't have it in me. <laughs> like I really do. Like and, and and women annoy the fuck out of me. They really do. Um, but if, but let's, let's, let me put it like this. If I'm walking, like, like, let's say like I'm walking right now, right? And I see like a guy and a girl and they're arguing and a dude just hits her with a quick one too. I'm gonna keep walking. I'm gonna just keep walking. And I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just write it up in my mind as they had a fight and she lost because that's what happened to Chris Brown. Rihanna channels Chris Brown to a fight and she lost. No, no, you're not. I... This man is not going to justify fucking Chris Brown right now. Oh my like, god. There's so many things to unpack here. <laughs> like, if I, for example, like if I were in his position and I saw that, I'd probably walk away too. But there's a difference between like looking at that and being like, hey, stop that. And, you know, not knowing that the dude's going to pull a gun or a knife on me. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like, you know, that's their business versus like, this dude that had a history of literally pulverizing this woman to like dust. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a keep an eye on this situation and call the cops. I'll be honest with you. Like, right? I, again, That's you know, I... you know, you never know what people are gonna do, but at the same time, like, I'm not gonna let somebody get away with that shit. Right. That's like one of those things you keep your head down, like you know, when you're far enough away, you pull out your cell phone. And it's like, hey, I want to need to report a disturbance on Fifth and Chestnut. Yeah. Like so, like I saw some guy hit some woman i don't know if they're still there but i want to make a report if you can send an officer over you don't have to like immediately just jump in and play superman to yeah i, I don't like... agree with the playing superman because society the way it is it's too risky okay like i get it i get it but yeah i would i would keep my eye on the situation because i wouldn't want to know like okay let's be honest if a guy's that open and free about it What's going on What's behind going... closed doors? I was just about to say that. Like, what don't we see? Yeah. If he's willing to punch her in the face on a, on a street corner, what, yeah. what's he doing when the blinds are closed? Yeah. Like, that's, that's like, a different level of holy shit. Like, I'm not going to let that guy out of my sight. Like, I will call to... the cops. And then on the follow-up sentence to mention that the... it's a Chris Brown-Rihanna situation that she yeah. asked for it is insane. Yeah, like holy fuck! I saw that when it happened. I I saw the elevator shit. That like, dude went to fucking town. We're not talking about somebody that like you know she punched him and he punched her back and or that was slapped her or whatever. Like yeah, it, it wasn't yeah, a like, one off thing. It wasn't a one for one. It wasn't a one off thing even. No, like, it was like I would argue attempted it was a murder. It's a prolonged period of time. <laughs> I like, would argue attempted murder. Yeah. Like with, with how savage the that how savage that was. Yeah. Like, this isn't like you know oh you hit me now I feel threatened I need to defend myself this is like I'm going to like borderline almost kill you like there's a huge difference in like self defense and feeling like you have to self defend yourself against you know a female that it w that's another weird juxtaposition of society that like. It's an interesting debate of, like, where is the whole sort of classical honor of, like, I don't hit women versus, like, I need to defend myself. And at what point is it okay for a man to, like, do the, like, I'm not walking away thing? Yeah. 
you know what I mean? Like, like men have a duty to retreat for a woman, but not another man. Like, it, and that's a weird debate. That's like, I don't even know what side I lay, lay on because it's just uncomfortable to discuss. Yeah, I'm trying to see. But to act like Rihanna, the Chris Brown Rihanna thing is like, you know, an equal fight of like, come at me, bro, is insane. Yeah, the was the Rihanna thing in the elevator? I think I'm thinking the Ray Rice situation. But yeah, like, here's what Rihanna looked like afterwards. Yeah, like, that's not, like, self-defense, you know what I mean? No. Like, it's not a situation where you can justify, like, we hit each other. Like, that was, like, a one-sided assault. Yeah. That was assault and battery. That wasn't self-defense. Like, and yeah. again, that's an uncomfortable dis- that's an uncomfortable debate that I don't even know where I can even speak on it because I don't even know how I feel about it. Yeah, I I can tell you how I feel about it. <laughs> I think if you're gonna beat a fucking woman that I, I honestly okay. First off, don't ever fucking lay hands on any woman. I I I feel that way about it. Um. Like, okay, you know what? You don't want to worship women and everything. Like, I get it. All right, you don't have to. But, like, don't lay hands on a woman. Like, that's just low. For a dude, especially, like, uh, all things aside, you're just going to consider, like, (laughs) I don't know how to put this lightly, Uh, a physical difference, in most cases, in stature between a male and a female. Like, it's just, it's not, it's not fucking right. Like, I, on so many levels, like, I can go on about this. Like, you're talking about, like, a guy who's normally going to carry more muscle mass, more strength, more power than a woman in most cases. In most cases, okay? Like, I, I will admit there's cases out there. Look, if you got, like, fuck, I, a guy who's, like, severely underweight maybe never lifted anything heavier than a pen in his life like okay the accountant. <laughs> he's an accountant or he works at a subway maybe <laughs> yeah and like you've got you've got a woman that's like working at like a fucking truck stop like actually working on fucking vehicles and shit like yeah she gonna kick his ass <laughs> they, like, they also think the situation depends too. Yeah. Like having a back and forth is different than like, okay, maybe I'm backed into a corner and she's saying I'm going to kill you and has like a serrated kitchen knife. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's another one of those like nuanced situation. It's like, okay, you know, what if you literally can't walk away and do you like what, what's the line of threat neutralization? And like, I'm not saying every woman's an angel. There's that fucking woman that, uh, murdered her uh, boyfriend and like she's like oh i threw the knife at him and it just happened to land in his chest in his heart i'm not kidding that was an actual defense yeah it was an an oopsie doopsie i wanted to hit him in the shoulder yeah yeah i just wanted to assault him not murder him yeah like she actually said from across the room i threw the knife and it landed in his chest in his heart and like that wasn't the case like there was a history of her beating on him like Honestly, in that, like, in a fight to the death situation like that, if he had done stuff, I don't think I could blame the dude. Like, it's it's a difference, like, when you're fighting for your life, like, that, like, truly fighting for your life, yeah, do whatever you gotta. I, I get it. Like, yeah, because then we come to the, the, the argument of, like, at when, do, when do we drop gender when it becomes, like, threat neutralization? Yeah. Like, is it survive at all cost? Or... Like, you know, what's your duty? Like, what's a duty to retreat, right? Like, yeah. like, like this guy is just saying, just pound your own your wife every time she doesn't... Yeah, she she's out of line, the, beat the hell out of her. She, like, yeah, she didn't cut the crust on your peanut butter and jelly sandwich. She, like, <laughs> beat, her, beat her into a coma. Next time she'll fucking remember to cut the crust off versus, like, you know, pushed into a corner with a butcher's knife saying, I'm going to kill you, Gerald. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, there's, like, this guy that just doesn't seem to understand nuance, and it's just, like, you know, like, oh, yeah, like, women kill babies. You should beat women. Like... Yeah, yeah, like, that's his logic here. Jesus. Oh, man. Laws. Women are known for doing this. They are known for fucking doing this. And 
we got to stop protecting them from their bad decisions because this is what I ultimately think the downfall of society is. Women continue to do the most evil shit in existence and we just and we just adapt. There was a post I shared how in the 70s the standard was you get a virgin. In the 80s, she can't have more than one body, then she can't have a kid, then she can't have multiple baby daddies. And if you, have you noticed how like women just continue to get worse and we don't correct them. And we are really seeing what happens when, you, and guys understand something, women are the majority raising kids. We've given them with feminism, this single motherhood power and their power, like, like for example, like the fucking <laughs> black mayor in Illinois, this bitch, is like a fucking Roman emperor terrorizing the citizens. And she's not doing anything good. Like, she's just a waste of money. And when women have power, they just become a waste of money. Everything just goes to shit. Everything goes to shit. Because we haven't beat their ass. Real shit. That's why. That's just truth. That's honest to God truth. That's why I think black women miss slavery so much. Because they liked it when the white man would slap them and, and just choke them. No. So you're equating slavery to a sexual kink? Oh my god. Is he literally equating slavery? Oh right now? my god, this guy. Sexual kink. Did he did I hear what he said there? To some extent, yes. But then like he's literally sitting here and trying to be like, you know, I like a sadomas all black women like sadomasochist relationships. That's why they want to be enslaved. Yeah. Like that that's Oh my God, uh, Jesus Christ! And do all that shit. I think I think what a lot of I think a lot of I think white dudes practice on black girls. To, so then when they get their white woman, they're like, I practice on Shaniqua and this she liked it. So it's definitely gonna kill Becky, <laughs> which which would be a good idea to do. Um, oh my but, God, this is that internalized racism I was saying. <laughs> wait, like, wait, Jesus, like you know I make so. I mock people for saying, like, you have internalized racism, internalized misogyny, but this dude is the actual like, embodiment of it. Yes, if there's any person out in the audience that is listening to this that is a leftist and, want, and wants to make an argument for, like, internalized racism, take this clip here. Yeah. <laughs> because this is your argument. This is your slam dunk. Oh my god. Against this whole like sort of Andrew Tate style black pill community. This guy here is your silver bullet. <laughs> but I really think that women, black women in particular, like fucking slavery. Because they like that brutality of it. And I think women really want that brutality from um from men because guys think about it. Like, think about how you have debates and conversations with women. You could have everything right and they don't fucking care. Women don't listen to logic. They go basically off feeling, basically. So how do you make a woman feel that she's doing some dumb shit <laughs> in a quick amount of time? <laughs> you know? Now, obviously I'm not saying you gotta go out there and just go beating the shit out of women. I'm not saying that. Oh, but yeah. understand, <laughs> understand that there has to be a real correction soon. And I think a beginning of that would be men having to physically correct women. I'm serious. Uh, it's it's the only thing I see working. I'm I'm so fucking serious. I really th and I I I think on a subconscious level. By the way, I I'm going to make a small complaint here. I don't know if this man has a filter going on or if he is filming in 2P, but Jesus fucking Christ, there's like fucking seven pixels on my screen right now. It feels like he's doing it. Like when was this recorded? Four months ago, February twentieth. I can't even make the argument that it's not a modern day phone because even <laughs> phone cameras for modern unless if because he hasn't had a job, he has like one of those like old fashioned sort of stuff and yeah. he's filming it and he's uploading it on his four G. <laughs> That's I can make that argument for why the quality is so low. That he literally has an old style phone and that he's uploading his video off his wireless network, his three four G. Yeah. Well, women actually desire that. I think they just want men to kick their ass in shape. In a literal sense. We got more fat bitches ever. These bitches need their ass beat. We need to whip them into shape. Isn't that a saying? Whip them into shape? Is it like... <laughs> now I'm going to people... Like, actually, if you look at the, the history of that phrase, it was... 
I don't know, but anyway, for real, we just have to do that. We gotta whip women into shape, kick their butts. Cause that's, cause that's the thing, like men, we correct each other, but with women, all women do is encourage other women to make the bad. Okay, here's the thing. I'm getting tired and I might have to pee again. So I'm going to double times this. Oh, well, not double times. <laughs> like this dude literally reads 50 shades of gray and think every woman wants this like unstable <laughs> fan fiction relationship. Yeah. I may step away and let this play again real quick. Play. At decisions. All they do, they encourage women to make terrible decisions to lower their sexual market values so that they can be miserable with them, right? Like men, we'll say the harsh stuff to each other because we're always, because that's why our eyes are in front because people are supposed to look out for you. Like, but women just have this thing where they really do empower delusion. And when you, and, and when you let a, women raise kids who are empowered by delusion, you have a fucking disastrous society and you really see in the black community which i'm obviously and i'm in the, you know what i mean like which is basically a matriarchy and it's fucking terrible it's absolutely terrible like i feel like this only validates and proves like i go outside and i see why the fuck i'm right <laughs> like i'm you know like women should not have power they absolutely should not and this is starting to creep into the uh, other communities as well i mean it's, it's done more than creep into it now but um i'm walking to the park do some pull-ups <laughs> yeah but um yeah i mean that's just one thing i really notice is i think women really desire for men to like start slapping them Let's think about it. Why, why the fuck do women like a pimp hand? Like, why, why do women, why are women gravitated towards that? Like, why, why does a pimp exist? Why? Like, under, isn't that strange? Well, it's not really strange, but the pimp hand. You know, uh, uh, it's, you know, if, and, like, and like I said, like, I don't think I could really beat a woman. But because it, to me, it just, it, to me, it feels, it doesn't feel like natural. But I also understand, like, if I was in like a life or death situation, and I had to, I would. Like, if a woman hit me with a bat, of course I'm gonna punch her in the fucking nose. But I'm not just gonna just hit her unless she, she would have to do something very, very um, just very annoying. I remember, I remember I saw a fucking Robert De Niro scene, and he's walking, and this lady is smoking a cigarette and following him. She kept. This man is just basing everything off of movies, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, like, and just, uh, did you hear what he said? No, I missed some of it. What, what did I miss? So he said that like men have to correct women because women empower each other's delusions <laughs> which i mean he's not wrong but men do the same thing like you are right now with like the whole sort of black pill thing you know you go on twitter this this community that community all empower each other's delusions like it's yeah not just a gender thing it's a communal thing communities will make an echo chamber and just embolden themselves it doesn't matter if they're women or or male yeah like female male like anyone does it because everyone looks for their quote-unquote tribe and then they empower each other and push out the opposing quote-unquote tribe yeah like it's not just women no men do it too you know the lgb community does it too the conservative catholic trad community does it too yep <laughs> like every spectrum and that every end of it does it <laughs> yeah yeah literally everybody oh my god i'm saying where's your car and he tells her to stop and she kept talking she kept talking then eventually he just shoots her and just walks to his car and says, i told you it was right here and drives off but it's just like that, that, that scene was fucking amazing but i could never imagine myself doing it you know, but I also know that we need a culture. Now, you guys might be saying like, well, well, should men, should men hit other men? Well, men hit other men, but we hit other men like for the right reasons. If we're, if it's a fight, defending somebody. Now, the reason I said wife, like the reason that this video is gonna be titled, why is it okay to beat your kids and not your wife is because your wife is your property, just like your kids are your property, right? Now see, a man is already punished for the actions of everybody else. A man bears the ultimate responsibility. I truly believe a man is responsible for all things. And I feel like the older I get, the more I'm gonna feel more responsible for the whole fucking world. I don't know how there's older men out here who don't give a fuck about the world. Actually, I know I do because they've probably been burned and lost everything and they just say fuck the world. I completely understand that, but me, I feel as though, like if I'm not gonna have kids, right? Cause I have to understand, like I might not get the women that I want. I definitely don't want no fat bitch. I definitely don't want a, a single mom. I definitely don't want a girl with tattoos, but that's but that's getting harder and harder to find. So let's say I'm- I cannot believe this guy. Like, I really can't. Like every time he talks, it's just progressively worse. Okay, so like, he's basically saying that he wants like the traditional trad family. Yeah. But he has so much distortion. It's like a cognitive distortion on what a trad family is yeah 
he's going by the whole like stereotypical biblical the man is the the head of the family but then like completely throws out what it says about the women and the children's roles are yeah yeah like, like no he doesn't want he doesn't want a woman that's going to stay at home you got to earn your keep kind of thing he doesn't it's like he he reads things but doesn't get the intent behind it <laughs> like 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 I just it, I'm rubbing my forehead so much that I feel like I'm starting to actually get chafing. Yeah, my my like, face was actually literally in my palm at one point. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like I I just like he's saying things and they're like <laughs> it's like you don't know what they mean. <laughs> it's like that fucking <laughs> It's like the Princess Bride with the inconceivable that word right, it's like that night I was <laughs> shitting on Rich for his like fucking PS4 take. Yeah. Where it's like define what a define what the PS4 architecture with the Jaguar cores are. Yeah. Like why did they go with the Jaguar cores over the cell processor of the PS3? I bet you can't. Like he can't even define to me what a trad family is. Yeah. It's just it seriously is. I don't think that word means what you think it does. <laughs> Right? Because, like, if we're going with the trad thing, like, you know, then women and children aren't technically property. That's, like, an Islamic thing. Yeah. So, like, you, like you're taking, like, all of these different religions and well, just, like, mashing them up into the greatest hits, but it, it's not <laughs> the greatest hits. It's no. Sides. No. Oh, my God. I might not ever have a family. So what am I going to do? I'm going to have to fucking find some way to just help the youth because this shit this shit that we have going on is fucking unacceptable bro like i'm serious like everything we really have to initiate force and i don't mean like lethal force but because like I, I, I said in the beginning of this video that women are responsible for 82 percent of child murder okay men always like to fucking and, and this is what really pisses me off like the people like the guys who think it's okay to hit your kids and not your wife they are the same fucking guys who are like if a man is a pedophile put his dick in a fucking wood chipper and chop him up and dismember his body and feed it to the pigs they'll go into these gruesome details about that shit but let a woman fucking rape a, a boy and oh where was she at when i was 12 like you see what I'm saying? Like, it's the same fucking energy and that's the thing we just keep half step okay it's predominantly guys that like uh portray that energy and there is a growing number of guys and women who think that that is just as equally disgusting. Right? Like, I, like here's my hot take. If a woman does the same to a uh, boy or girl, I, they throw her in the wood chipper too. Yeah. Yeah. I have that same energy. Gender doesn't matter. It's the, it's the victim that matters to Throw me. the whole person away. Yes. <laughs> right? Like, right? Like, it's just, I don't, I, I can't. <laughs> I, 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 I... <laughs> speechless this man makes you speechless <laughs> remember, when I, remember when i said he could beat me by underwitting me like he's doing it like, like he he's so his takes are so bad that i can't even begin to use my intelligence on it because like it it can't even be quantified how dumb it is yeah like, that's just, all they can just sit there and just say no. Yeah. Stepping. <laughs> and, that's, and that's why nobody really respects this fucking country. I mean, at least the kids, like, I love America, I really do, but I, I also understand that we exercise very open hypocrisy, and everybody sees it, and especially the kids see it, so... And I know this answer isn't an answer that I, most people really want to do, because I don't think most guys want to fucking slap their wife around, if I'm being honest with you. I really don't think most guys want to do that. But I do think that some guys acknowledge deep down inside, in a place where they really don't want to admit that, some women really do need their ass beat. <laughs> really. <laughs> like, and, I, and I don't mean to... I don't mean to sound like I'm glorifying violence, but I remember I would listen to my mom beat the shit out of my sister, and hear my sister scream and cry like, that shit was terrible, bro. And, and and I felt like sometimes my mom would try to beat the shit out of my sister more because she knew she couldn't beat the shit out of me and my, bra, my, my brother because we were getting bigger. And, that, and that's another thing, too. I want to explain something. The reason your parents put their hands on you because you were a kid, they were essentially bullying you, okay? Like, I understand that. Like, before you get bullied at school, before you get bullied by the world, your parents try to bully you first because they... Because I understand something. A lot of people don't fucking get like good parents and you have some people who have kids and they want the kids to go through everything that they fucking went through, you know? And, and I'm saying this. If they're gonna be people who will be, what'd you say? Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> he just went through 
and justify it in beating kids. And then he brings up a literal first-hand story of the hell his sister went through. Yep. As she was savagely beat as a child to the point where his mother wouldn't touch them because they could fight back but had no problem abusing their sister. And you're going to sit there and tell me that you've seen your sister go through that pain, that agony and suffering. Yep. And you're still advocating to beat kids. Yep. And women. He wants his sister to go through it again in that same light, technically. If you're going to apply the argument, let's apply it evenly. You're wanting your sister with it, whatever man she finds to go through and be have the living shit beat out of her by whatever guy. I... I am actually in awe. <laughs> like, I can't make any debate for this because I just think that you shouldn't breathe. <laughs> like, I, I, I don't understand any person that was like, I saw this person that I love being Just absolutely through this hell. brutalized, so we should totally do it to other people because based yeah like i i just i cannot i i just i no <laughs> <laughs> that's it Abuse no. kid. <laughs> it's like, like if you're gonna beat your kids thinking that you're teaching them a lesson and you're making them a better person right when they make these mistakes in life but then if your wife is making the same mistakes and your kid sees that you beat the shit out of him for that right because he's your property too your daughter your, your child they're your property too but then they see your wife which is also your property making the same mistake and she don't get her ass beat well now you're just showing the open hypocrisy and and how there really is a double standard and that there are those who get beat for acting up and there are those who don't get beat for acting up and i really feel like because that's really the problem is that we're not fucking consistent now my answer truly is this is what i want is for people to just stop putting their hands on each other period unless it's you know it's sanctioned and people can fight i mean get paid to fight and do that type of shit but just but just so let's talk about the fact that okay he's totally missing the point of corporal punishment as it pertains to most people most people are uh, who advocate for uh corporal punishment do so in the tense of that like okay what you're doing is corrective action to your child for something that they did wholly wrong and you want them to never forget it like that's that's the predominant action so like I don't understand how you're going to apply this to an adult because you're, you're doing it in the terms of like shaping an, a shaping a young person into a good adult. But when they're already an adult, like you're just shaping them into the adult you want them to be. Yeah. And, and here's another issue I have with it. Right. Like he's describing like, you know, like you said, corporal punishment but then what you're describing isn't corporal punishment. It's physical abuse. Yeah. There's a difference between smacking your kid's ass and saying, don't ever do that again. And then to what you described happened to your sister. Yeah. Like there's a totally different like spectrums to that. Agreed. I just, I, I just, oh. it's an escalated level. It's, it's not just a, a corrective action based on what he said. It's a, then, like, it's a, it's a dislike, a hatred, maybe. And then I, I, I wonder, like, what the point of this video is. Because <laughs> he's, he's literally sitting there like, I don't think we should put hands on each other. Then why did we spend the last, what is it? 20 minutes, it, roughly. 8, 1859, justifying it. Yeah. If you don't want it, you should be making the argument of, like, I don't want it. And this is why, and I've experienced this, and yeah. I just don't feel like it actually helps. Yeah. You know, it's like, you start making <laughs> the, you start off by trying to, like, make the argument, right, of, like, if you beat your kids, you should beat your wife, which is, okay, I'm, I'm, I understand that you're trying to make, like, an in intellectual consistency here, but then you justify it, and then 20 minutes later, you're like, I don't think we should hit each other. The lack like, of consistency, yeah. Well, it's like, I understand making the the intellectual consistency. Like, I would sit here and be like, okay, well, that's that's a good point. Like, if you beat your kids, why not your wife? Yep. And then I would spend the next 20 minutes describing why you should do neither. 
<laughs> yeah. Not just, like, you know, having this sort of, like, fairyland of, like, well, some people beat their wife, so I guess... I, that boils down to the whole, like, when we were having that uh, political debate on um libertarianism, where I'm like, 90% yeah. of people that are libertarian are literally just anarchists trying to, like, that don't even understand what libertarianism actually is. Like, you know, you, you're, you're literally arguing the fact that, well, we can't stop all the abuse, so we should just accept it. Yep. Like, or we could condemn it and, as a society, continue to shame it and then punish it as it shows up. Like, yeah, we might not be doing the best thing, but it's like the equivalent of, like, you know how we get drug charges down? We just legalize drugs. Cool, yeah, now we don't have prisons full of drugs, but we have streets full of junkies. Yeah. That's that's not solving the problem. It's just shifting the problem to a different area. Yeah, and I, I just... His logic is flawed even in the fact of what evidence has he provided thus far in 20 minutes that shows and supports that beating your wife would, would change anything. Right? Like, he's just walking down a street screaming into his phone that you should beat your kids <laughs> and wondering, wondering why people aren't taking his point seriously. <laughs> Meanwhile, then, like, 20 minutes later, he dismantles his own argument. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> like, I can't even say you're fairly playing devil's advocate here. Yeah. Like... <laughs> oh, my God. Like... I, I don't know. Yeah, I, no. <laughs> to just be doing that? No, because... What I've come to realize is that we live in a society that sacrifices children, you know? And this is why America is destined to fall, because the children have been put last for a very long time. <laughs> for a very long time. If this guy goes off into a fucking roast game rant, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> right? Well, that's, that's like saying we have failed the children of our society, so fuck it. Let's not care about children. Yeah. Let's not fix it. Let's just give up on it. Yeah. Why bother? Look at that. Um, you see test scores. They're terrible. Obesity up. IQ going down. What the fuck is going on? Nobody's trying to stop it. And it's obviously evident in my community, if we're being honest. Um, but it's, it's in other communities now. And what the fuck is going on? It's going on because we have let women bully children... And it's really time to, for men to fucking come up and, and stop women. Because that's really what you guys think about. It. Like, women are actually bullying the entire country. They're bullying all, all children and all, all men. Believe me when I say that. And we have to take their rights away. We, like, we can't. We can't. We can't continue to, to fucking act like... We, we have to basically take women by the hair or grab them by the shoulders and throw them out the fucking chair because they're the ones in the driver's seat. We have to kick them out the fucking car, throw them out, and we have to get back. And it, But men have to, like, agree on this. Like, this is a thing where it's like, if you see a dude correcting this girl, you I, I get it, it's the simp thing. I, I really understand that, but I just hate how guys don't, like, that same instinct isn't there when women fucking rape and kill kids. That, that's the thing that really bothers me because there's a, because evil women are, are showing themselves more and more and more, and I'm asking myself, when the fuck are we going to get fed up? But, um, let's, I'm about to do some pulls. I'm about to be at this, uh, this park now and I guess pull-ups in. Thank you guys. I love working out in the cold. That's that's why I gotta make videos outside as much as possible because once it gets warm, it's gonna be because I remember I walked to this park, and I think I saw like two middle schoolers fucking real shit. I just I just as soon as I was like, okay, I'm leaving and just left. But it this shit like <laughs> anyway. But yeah, guys, have a good one. See you next time. God bless. If you're new here, please subscribe. Make sure to like the video. See you next time. Thanks again. Good <laughs> Okay, so uh there's an awkward juxtaposition here. Go ahead. He's walking outside, so he's in the real world. Yep. But his arguments are from somebody that sits online Twitter every day. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I don't know, like, like I, I'm confused. Because, like, his arguments are people that, like, are terminally online and not in the real world. But he's out in the real world. He's wondering like, I, why. I, he's, he's wondering why there's, like, this problem with, like children being dumber and like obese and all that it's because they're sitting online listening to people like him i'll yeah, be honest yeah. like yeah. you know they're they're not out there they're not making their own formative choices like i feel like a lot of that's been taken away and now it's based on like oh what's cool and what's edgy because kids right, will okay. always like what's edgy all right well let's be honest here 
they're watching Andrew Tate. He has 2.1k yeah. subs. They're not yeah. watching him. <laughs> no, not him per se, but this this <laughs> manos, manaverse, manosphere fucking yeah, type like, content. We're, we're like, you know, this like, like Dime Store Drexel. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like like the, the MGTOW shit, right? Yeah. Like, like I don't I don't I I just uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, you know what? If we ever have to worry about debating him, we just let him go long enough. He'll he'll de- he'll deconstruct his own argument. <laughs> well, yeah, I'll just let him talk there and just be like, you know, watch him as he just unravels his own like entire debate points. Yeah, like I I I am so. So just flabbergasted, I'll be honest. Like the these these concepts, these points. Like, like all right, all right. I want to know opposite side of the argument, right? So this guy sits there and he says, "Look, if I see a dude striking his woman, I'm not gonna do anything." Okay, so are you gonna do something then if you see a woman striking a man? If so, don't you think that's a little bit uh oh uh, what's the word I'm looking for biased? I was gonna say, um, it kind of reminds me of an animal. Yeah. Like a hippo. <laughs> like, like you know, hypocritical. <laughs> <laughs> like, like if you would, uh, like, you know, just walk by as a man did it, but then you would step in if a woman was doing it. Yeah. Like, and, and like honestly, based on his arguments, I think he would. <sighs> Probably. Like, it just based on his position, okay, then, then we'll take it a step further. All right, what happens if you walk by and it's a kid beating the mother? Yeah, yeah, no, I can... You know, like, like where where do you draw the line? Like, you're pushing the line. You're pushing the envelope. You're pushing, pushing the point. At what point do you draw the line? Yeah, and I would even argue the kid one would be harder because at what point do you step into another person's offspring? Yeah. You know, well that like when it's not your job, like it's not your job to parent that it's not your job to to insert yourself into that because you're not family, you're not friends, like Yeah. At what point do you do that? Yeah, I I mean, I'll give a personal story again, you know. I I watched uh a family member lay hands on a family member. I'll leave it at that. And uh, I lost it and went at the person attacking the other person. And it went into a violent fight. And I mean violent fight. And, like, I had no qualms about it. Never felt bad about it. Never felt bad about it for a single day in my life. Good. Like, I, that was so absurd that, like, no. And it was, it was just a simple push and I was done. Yeah. Like... I just, I have this gut feeling like, again, you know, like, okay, well, what, what happens then? You know, like, again, taking this argument further, what happens if it's a daughter beating on a mother? Now, where do you draw a line? All right. <laughs> All right. Or what if the daughter is autistic, is autistic lesbian yeah. beating the dad? Yeah. You know, like, like at, what, at what point do you allow the thing that you like to violate the thing you don't? Yeah, where's your where's your moral lines? Where's your justification? Yeah, like what's the ethical limit of like this is okay, this isn't? Yeah, because I, I and it's like I don't know what to where to believe with him, because he's trying to say like twenty minutes later, like and subscribe, don't hit your wife. Yeah, when the entire video was about beating your wife. Yeah, and 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 coming up with the philosophical and moral reasons it's okay to, but then you're not going to even stand by the arguments you. Yeah, like I just believe in anything you've said, whether it's you don't support the beating of women or if you do, because they they literally are paradoxical. Yeah, yeah, I I uh, I just am surprised that he didn't bring up rule of thumb. I was waiting for that argument. Okay, have you ever heard the whole rule of thumb thing? Yeah, isn't it like you can beat your wife with something that's as thick as your thumb? Yeah, yeah. There like... was there was a rule at one point. Where you weren't allowed to beat your wife when anything's thicker than the width of your thumb, because that was that was abuse. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't bring it up and been like, "Oh, well, you know, when we when we uh, 
when we instituted the rule of thumb, we were being kind and generous towards women. <laughs> yeah, right, because we gave them structure with it. Oh, man. <laughs> and that's just one of those things where it's like, I don't even think you probably knew about what the rule of thumb is then if you didn't mention it, because that argument is literally right up the alley of what he was trying to argue. Yeah, yeah, that's why I was, like, waiting for it. I was waiting for it that whole fucking time. Like, you know, I just... And to give you give you a brief overview, Belinda, so this this man, like, if you didn't catch everything, this man has justified for 20 minutes straight that it should be okay to beat women uh, because you're allowed to beat your children, which you're not. Um, and <laughs> the flawed, flawed argumentative right there, right <laughs> off the bat. And, and his logic for it is that women kill more children than men, which biologically, sure, if you're counting abortion... Um, but even in counting abortion, I don't know how you would how you came up with the eighty two percent. Yeah, he came up with a very specific percentage, and like it's just such a such a flawed argument. He takes apart his argument, his own argument, at one point, sitting there stating that his mother beat the living hell out of his sister, and would not beat them because she knew they would fight back. And his justification falls along the lines of then, in that case, he's okay with his sister growing up and being in a relationship where her husband beats the living crap out of her. Yeah, and then he, and then the capstone on the whole video is, <laughs> I don't think we should put hands on each other. Yeah. So he just spent 20 minutes arguing for domestic abuse of both minors and women. There was when also... He doesn't there believe was... in any of it, supposedly. There was also a, a tangential argument made at one point that uh, black women like uh, like that kind of stuff because of slavery. Yeah, the, he basically hinted that like black women are into it, into like sadomasochist sexual dynamic relationships because of slavery, and that they long for the return of slavery so they can embrace their sadomasochism. Yeah. <laughs> is he counting periods? <laughs> uh, he might be, honestly. <laughs> oh man! Like, I, it, it's just I don't understand. <sighs> like, there's so many leaps in logic and like mental gymnastics and fact twisting to get to the point, only for him to say, "I don't think we should hit each other." Like, I can't take any of his argument seriously. Well, oddly enough, Belinda, he is actually racist. <laughs> yeah, no, he and was I, actually I, shitting on the black community and saying how that basically they weren't, that the um, African-American community aren't good people. And that there are some good black people, but most of them aren't. Yeah, yeah, he is, uh, he's, I don't even know how to explain that. Because would you call that racism? Yeah, I guess you could. I would say I would say internalized racism. Yeah. yeah, like I would use the actual term, like, and I'm not talking about like the Twitter term of like you criticize somebody of your own race, so you're racist. Like this is, I would say, like it's legitimate internalized racism. Oh my god, this this guy's just something else. I've got to I've got to cover him more. Dude, I've I think we to. should one night like have like a black pill stream. Yeah. Like him and DBDR, and like just literally sit down and focus on some of these arguments. <laughs> I would be down to join for that. Like, yeah, like I just I find some of this shit like really interesting. Like, okay, DBDR, in my opinion, is funny. He tells it from a side of humor. There yeah, is I... this side of it that like is just another world, and like, and that's. Maybe I'm biased toward DPDR because we've met him unironically. But he was in here. He was laughing with us. He was taking our roast by, with stride. This guy would do that. I respect the fuck out of that. This dude literally was crying and bitching in the one video about how women are mean to him and gossipy cat, like mean girls, and that all women are fat and annoying. And they yeah. basically were like, he was basically mm. quasi saying that all women are fat and emotionally abuse him in a way. <laughs> well, like, you know, 
shitting on women, where at least DBDR comes across as like funny and like yeah. entertaining. Like well, DBDR is like an entertainment. I mean, he yes. he, he considers himself the problem. Yes. This man considers everybody else is the problem. Yes. And I don't know, like I said, like, I, DBDR, in my opinion, that's somebody that I would actually like talking to. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. if he ever shows yeah. up in chat again, if he's not completely scared off after last time, that's somebody I would actually like to talk to. Roasting aside, just to pick his brain on some of this shit. Yeah. <laughs> As opposed to this dude, which is just like, I hate everyone besides autistic lesbians. Well, I, I just saw a video why I spent my teen years catfishing. Yeah, no, I saw that earlier. Like, like holy shit. This is ridiculous on a whole nother level. And there's so many, there's 340 videos. Of just him. Yeah. Like, you could, we could make a stream on him. Yeah. Not just the whole black pill thing, just him alone. Yeah. Because uh, I'm, I really, really want to see the video on how Taylor Swift is similar to Doctor Disrespect. <laughs> that I, I am just. What is your argument? Because I would love to see t messages of Taylor Swift saying, Holy "I want to ride you, fourteen-year-old boy." Holy that shit. would be the same. This, what his first video was a year ago. Three hundred and four. He's like a. He's basically a daily uploader. Yeah. Oh, lovely. He's got a actually understanding why white people are racist today. I'm sure that won't be unbiased. I want to know because you're racist towards your own race. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> this is one of the few things that maybe you have some authority on. Yeah. <laughs> like this might be one of those things that you might be able to argue for. Oh, my God. Like I, this is this. Uh, I, wait, wait. So a year ago, we have the I love women, but did the Bible warn us about them? <laughs> so in the span of a year, he went from loving women, like insulish, and, yeah, but like otherwise okay with women and shit. Oh, Sneeko. So, Sneeko admits so, incels are right. So he goes from incel to virgin with rage. Yeah. In, like, the span of, like, 365 days. Two months. How women ruin Two your months. life. I mean, I can... <laughs> uh, like, I, I just... This is absurd. Two months going from... Like, like... <laughs> yeah, here. Right here. Look, within, like... Within what? One... So one, two, three, four, five videos. He goes from actually understanding why white people are racist today to why race realists are right about IQ and race. Wow. So he really is the fucking like black pill to eugenics <laughs> <laughs> like pipeline. Yeah. Like I, I don't even understand this. Yeah, he is the problem. Melinda, he he definitely is the problem. Oh my god, this is just amazing. Like, this is some morally bankrupt fucking content. How how ending public schools would end the incel crisis? There's not an incel crisis. Oh my god, how I fumbled my last relationship. <sighs> you had a relationship <laughs> to fumble. <laughs> Why I love Asians the most. Yeah. Oh my god. How much you want to bet it's going to be all the stereotypical stuff. Like the, they respect men and they sub, they're they submissive and all this other shit. They like anime and they can cook noodles. Yeah. They can cook ramen. Right. Oh my god. Is it good that women don't camouflage their red flags anymore? <laughs> oh my god. How the fall of dance, the 1960s, and disco music ruined American culture. <laughs> I saw that. I was looking at the one directly above it. <laughs> Is there any good women in the West anymore? It's like, go East, young lad. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Like, just some of these. Like I can scroll and stop at a random point and find something. You would become the devil if you... If it meant you got a loyal wife. Uh, what made me quit smoking weed? 
<laughs> what, man? He's done this I, video twice. Why is I it okay to beat your children, not your wife? What I don't get about pet owners? Why I wish Death Note was real? <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, remember that video when I talked about that woman who had the really unique name and she denied me? Yeah, he I'm scribbling in this, my death note. Mm -hmm. He actually scribbling did her name. this twice. Because this is eight months ago. So four months later, he's recycling the content? Wait, play that one. See if it's the same video and it's not re-uploaded. Hello. I have a question. Why is it okay to beat your children, but not okay to beat your wife? Now, there was some... Loud piece of shit moped at a ramp by, so I'll just say it again. Why is it okay to beat your kids, but not okay to beat your wife? Okay, we got the beginning of that one. Where's the other one? Because it should have my fucking here. I'll do it this way search. Just look up beat women, <laughs> beat, <laughs> beat <the> wife. <laughs> How many times did he upload this? Oh god, okay, two. I thought there was more. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> Good evening, gentlemen. Hope nope, I'll be... it's totally different. He did the same subject twice, though. Dude, he recycled content like IGN. Oh my god. He's black pill IGN. <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, man. Oh, shit. It is early, late, whatever. I need to go to what? sleep. <laughs> I'm, like, wondering why I'm tired, and I look over, and it's 5 a.m. Oh, Holy damn. Shit. It's six. It's 6.04 here, I didn't even realize that. Because I'm just busy <laughs> shitting on this dude. 